Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Happy Friday, end of the week, you know, we made it through. Good work, everybody. So, yeah, warming up with some of this, and then we're gonna switch over to Pokemon Legends Arceus in just a little bit. Ended up having a later dinner than planned, so only gonna do like a half hour of this, probably three hours total, you know, shorter stream, but that's usually the case on a weekday, you know. It's hard to, uh, hard to gauge exactly how much time you'll have when you got a job and everything. So, let's get into it. Oh, I never realized this cup was a Mobius strip. I guess I just never noticed that, uh, that last shot. That's pretty neat. have less commentary than usual today. It's been a long week, so, uh... Long week, and I haven't been sleeping great, either. Uh, you know. I don't know, maybe it's my anxiety. Uh, maybe it's because I keep forgetting... I keep forgetting that my protein... My protein powder has... I'm in B12 in it, so... That'll keep you up, but in any case, I'm just gonna stream for a bit, bed early, hit the gym again. I've been hitting the gym at least three times a week. The last couple weeks, I'm hoping to keep up with it, getting some results. It's gonna take a while. I definitely, when I was sick, I definitely lost this muscle. That's, that sucks. There's like a lot of like repercussions to that too. Like I just feel way worse in general. Um, but, yeah, I'm working on it. Ah, oh, dip. Ah, oh, dip. Come on, I'm right at the end. Let me just finish it off. Let me just get to the end here. There it is. Nice. Uh, I also decided for my uh, marathon next thir or next Saturday, because uh, I do a marathon last Saturday of every month. You know, missed a couple in there due to like travel and uh, health stuff, but. Getting back to it, I did that great charity marathon last month. Go check that out in a view on demand and on my archive channel. It's 12 and a half hours, 100% Banjo Kazooie, but it was a pretty fun time. And uh, yeah, this month I've decided I'm going to be playing Doom 2016. The big thing with that one is that uh, I've beaten it before, but it took me quite a while. You know, taking breaks here and there. I don't know exactly what my eventual end time was. It's not a super long game. It's, it's definitely within my uh, four to four to sixteen hour limit currently. Yeah, you know, probably do some longer ones later. But uh. For now, that's my limit. And uh, the big thing is I need to, I'm gonna play through it on my off time just to remind myself of how the maps go. My biggest thing is always gonna be getting lost. I'm, I'm very bad at navigating 3D maps in first person. It's, I don't know, it's just one of my biggest weaknesses as, as a gamer. I cannot keep track of the maps. Um, and then also, it's gonna be a lot of deaths. This is gonna be one of the bigger things. Like, uh, no matter what you do, that game is brutally hard. And so you're gonna die a few times. 
And that means repeating areas. Thankfully, you know, checkpoints are pretty solid. And anytime that you do die, you're able to get back to it pretty quickly. So it's not not too bad in that uh, in terms of that. But it is still pretty difficult. So Gotta be careful of that. No, oh, you gotta be careful of that too. Nope. No. Nope. Ah, yeah, I think that's gonna be the the trouble spot in this cup is uh that particular race. So I'm gonna have to, to work on that one a bit. But yeah, tuned in. It's gonna be uh Doom 2016. Probably gonna be a lot of raging if that's what you're into. There's always a point at, towards the end of any of the marathons where I start to rage because I just, I get tired, I get cranky, I just want, I just want to finish the game at that point. Because, like, there's some games, like, uh, I had in time where I was just like, yeah, I was just having a great time throughout. But then there's other ones like Super Metroid where it's like, okay, just let me, just let me finish this. I, yeah, I don't know, if, if I get different, like, sittings and everything, it's not too bad. It's just like when I'm trying to get a game all the way through, there's a certain point where I'm just like, okay, we need to get the show on the road. I have no patience for any of the little idiosyncrasies of the game, you know? Just to say, I, there's just points in pretty much almost every game where there's just one little weird thing that feels like it isn't your fault. You know, just something in the controls or just the design where you're like, that feels like, that, that feels like I have no control over it. That's fine. There are certainly games where that's like specifically uh, the intention, like Super Meat Boy or whatever. But, um, yeah, those, I can tolerate those just fine. Like, most of the time, no problem. I get it, you know. No game's perfect. Had in Time really was, like, the only game that I've encountered where there weren't really any parts like that, you know? Da, 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 da. Like, it was just smooth through the entire experience. Everything felt totally controlled. You know, enemies were annoying, but they're supposed to be. They are antagonists. But, uh, yeah. Those moments, they're so easy when you're, like, well-rested and you're just enjoying it for the game. Uh... It's so, it's easy to ignore those, but then when you're like tired because you've already been playing all day, and then one of those things happens, it just gets to you. And if it happens often enough, it's like, yeah, I just will have no patience for it. It's like, well, like I just want to make this happen. Like, I'm not a speedrunner. I'm not, like, the worst gamer either. Like, I've certainly seen much better gamers, of course, but, like, I don't know. I feel it just feels sometimes, especially when playing, like, older games, when they didn't quite have a handle on what difficulty was, like, reasonable. Um... I'm also curious about like playtesting numbers and stuff, you know, for older games as well as current games. Like I see a little too often, I see people like, um, people making a game and being shocked when they hear a uh, certain like base level feedback. And it's like, did you not playtest? Did you pay attention when you playtested? Because like. You can't tell me 
in a lot of games, it's like you can't tell me that these things did not come up in playtesting even once. And if they didn't, then that means that you didn't get the best playtesters. Like, you gotta get a wide, diverse range of playtesters. I think that's that's one of the big follies that a lot of game companies will do, is they'll get people... They'll only playtest with people who are already into the thing and are already interested in being a playtester. And it's like... Obviously, don't force anybody to play test if they don't want to, but... Like, get grandma to play it. Get... get random person on the street who's not played a video game since, like, Pong. And see what they think, because... Inevitably, they'll notice something that the standard gamer never would have noticed, you know? Like, an experienced gamer will just take certain things for granted. Ah, oh, come on! We'll just take certain things for granted and just feel that it's very intuitive but like someone who's never played a game or like has not played a modern game they'll notice things immediately where you're just conveying things poorly or you think that you have things you know laid out in a way that's interesting but uh your signposting is not working as well as you thought thought it was because the people who you had playtesting were already looking for signposting. Like, they knew to look for that, and they could recognize it, like... A lot... a lot of times... You know, like, look at... That's one big thing that the NES and the SNES had going for it. <coughs> Is it... it... the signposting recognized that a lot of people did not necessarily... Uh, know what they were supposed to do. So you had to do all these subtle psychological things, and this is discovered through playtesting to be like, all right, this is this is what people are seeing, and this is what it is causing them to do, like uh, input feedback. You know, they they see this element of the game, and it causes them to react in this way, and. Obviously, you can never cover every way that people can react, but you can find, you know, through your data, like, this is the general way people will react, so I gotta work around that. It's very important. You know? Or, like, the amount of times I see, uh, like, tabletop designers or indie game devs only do internal playtesting. It's like, yeah, of course you're gonna get bad info if you limit it to only your employees and friends. Like, you have to include every, you gotta, like obviously you don't have to include every single person because like, you know, you're not expecting like a two year old to play your game necessarily, but like, you can recognize that a good portion of people will have different viewpoints, different experiences. And expecting them all to have the mindset of a, you know, experienced gamer is, is just folly. That's why when I see people who are like, oh, I playtest at, like, a, a gaming meetup, it's like, sure, that's a good start, but, like, pl uh, like playtest with randos on Discord, playtest, you know, at your local library or something, like, if it's, like, tabletop, that is. Um, like, just take it to anybody, and they'll be able to point out things immediately, like, this was confusing, I didn't understand this. And then it comes down to your judgment... You know, whether that's actually important or not, it's all about compromises, but that at least gives you data. Like, it's not, you're not here to be like, um, you're not there to judge necessarily or to even explain your reasoning for stuff. When you're playtesting, you're literally just gathering data. to get every bit of data that you can and work out what it means, what it means about your game, what it means for your game. 
and how you can fix the things you think need to be fixed and how and uh, what things can be ignored. Like, it is all a matter of just getting information, paying attention, and thinking deeply about what it is, what are your goals, what are your priorities, what what matters to you as a, as a developer, as a designer. Of course, that's even like having the luxury to do that. There's so many people who are unfortunately not, uh, who don't even have those options because they're not an independent developer. They're you know, a developer for a large studio or something, and it's like, then they basically have to follow whatever the focus groups dictate, whatever the, you know, the, uh, the movers and pushers and all that decide, like, you know, even if they don't understand why a decision was made, they'll certainly pigeonhole you into stuff, so... Do what you can, where you can. That's that's the main thing. Ah, oh, you! Mm. I was right there. I was right there at the end. Man, okay. Yeah, it really, it just comes down to priorities, you know? What do you want your game to be? What, how strongly you're willing to commit? How, how willing you are to compromise? And, uh, you know. The, what, what was the last one? Oh yeah, and how, uh, what criticisms you're willing to accept. Like, both in accept in changing and accept in just, like, emotionally accept. Like, there's um, not much I'm going to be able to do about that. Because no matter what you do, right, there's always going to be some kind of criticism. Like, people say, Portal, for example. People say Portal is the perfect game. And I'd say yes. It's very, very good. But... I have problems with the timing puzzles. I find them very annoying because um, they take so much agency away from you as a player and generally just end up asking a lot of your patients to get it all lined up correctly. And so those puzzles I'm not as big a fan of. Because like, the portal itself is a mechanic, fantastic, and a lot of the puzzles very well put together, but, like, the timing puzzles feel like they could have, they could have been polished a bit more, you know? They could have worked their way around a lot of the big, the bigger, uh, rough spots with them that caused so much, like, extra waiting. And, like, the, the final boss, like, I, f I feel like it feels kind of weak. I would say the final boss is actually one of the weaker parts of that entire game. Getting to the final boss is great, but, like, the actual mechanics of the final boss are, like, I don't know, a bit, bit underwhelming to me, at least. But that's the thing, is, like, that's the game that they made. They, you know, they probably had a deadline, and that is probably something that did come up in playtesting that they accepted. Like, no matter what you do... There's always going to be problems with uh, your games. And you just got to kind of... Kind of deal. Or even... Not even necessarily problems, but like things that people don't like. And there's no accounting for taste, obviously, but like... You can... It's basically what taste are you willing to account for? What person are you hoping will enjoy the game? And are they going to enjoy... Uh, are they going to enjoy it, or... 
Are you are you missing what they look for? It's it's art, man. It, uh, no artwork is ever finished. It's only abandoned. You could work on it forever and ever and ever, and constantly keep improving and polishing, improving and polishing, and it'll just never be finished. Because no matter what, like, even if you keep doing that, your sensibilities as an artist will change. Your level of skill as an artist will change as you're working on it. And you'll see new places where you could improve that you didn't realize before. And so do you keep going back, keep re retooling it, reworking it, or do you just, like, let it be what it is and move on to the next thing? That's really, I, I feel like that is the major, major skill that you develop in any creative field, in any art form, is at what point, at what point am I willing to let this be finished, let this go? That's what, um, that's what Synecdoche, New York is about, right? the the whole s story more or less like the the main plot is that he has this play that he wants to put on but it, his his concept is so huge and so ambitious that it just keeps expanding and expanding and expanding and he's like I want to be like real I don't want it to feel like a play I don't want it to be a play and it keeps expanding to the point that he just creates a whole realistic setting of New York City in a warehouse life size and he still keeps retooling it and retooling it and re retooling it over and over again and he's just never satisfied never satisfied and that's the thing is like literally as he's working on it he like he realizes like oh it could be improved here it could be improved there it could be more my vision there and there and there and I, he's trying to like work through the ideas like what is the concept what's my goal as he's doing it and just it never finishes he works on it for just like his entire life and it's like do you want to strive to have the perfect the perfect artwork that you could never improve on or do you want to strive to put put out a lot of art into the world and just show show what what you can at the time with what you have that's really that's really the question I don't know. I, I, I found it with voiceover, you know? And voiceover, it's a little easier because a lot of it is very commercial. It's someone else's vision, you know? It's an interpretive art. So while you are bringing your own sensibilities and your own skills to the table, ultimately, if you're just doing voiceover in something, it's going to, you know, it's going to be someone else's idea. It's going to be someone else's vision, and they will decide if they're happy with it. So, you know, at a certain point, you have to you have to kind of let it go. You know, you can't be too precious about any one particular performance because no matter how much you want to keep perfecting it and perfecting it, your sensibilities for what's perfect will change consistently. And it's ultimately not up to you. It's ultimately up to the director, the writer, the... <coughs> The producer, whoever you are voice acting for, you know? And if that's you, well, then that becomes a different thing. I, I posited this question on r slash voice acting one time of what do you, um... Uh, do you think that voiceover can be an art into its own right? And my point being that, like, it is it is an interpretive art form, so, like, no matter, you know, even if you are doing something else, like, even if you are creating an entire thing, like an audiobook, you know, dramatic reading, a, uh, an animation, and you're doing all the work, uh, you're still doing interpretation in when you're doing those aspects when you're wearing those hats that's 
where that artwork is going. Meanwhile, the voiceover, it's still interpretive. It's interpretive of your own work, but it's interpretive nonetheless. So I was like, is there a way that something that a voiceover in isolation without any other elements can be its own artwork? And I got stupid, stupid replies. The ones that really frustrated me were um, people people being offended that I implied that a, a commercial voiceover was not, was not art. It's not. It's skill. It's craft, for sure. And you can bring artistic skills to it, but it is not art. It is, it is like, it, it is creative commercialism. And I, I find, I find anybody who has that mindset that just because they ha made creative choices that that makes something art, like, I don't know. I, I feel, yeah, I find it kind of depressing because it's like, man, like, art is really nothing to you. And that's not to get down on people who, you know, have different concepts of art. Like, it's obviously its own thing. And it's it really comes down to the particular artist, what they will perceive as art. But, um... Yeah, I don't think just having creative decisions inherently makes something art. Like, that that's the kind of stuff Warhol was trying to get at. Which is even dumber considering Warhol didn't do most of his own work. He, you know, he had the Warhol factory, which basically was that. It was like churning out, you know, artwork created by someone else. And uh, putting his, like, name on it, putting his brand on it. So that, you know, no one, the actual artist didn't really get credit. I don't know. Like, it, take pride in your work. Take pride in your craft. If you, if, if you do do something that's commercial, um, you know, Take pride in it. Do do your best. Use all of your craft and your skill to its fullest, but like don't don't settle for calling that art. You know? If you want to do art, if you want to create art, then like you can do that and you can use your craft and your skill, even if it is something super commercial and use super commercially like voiceover to make something artful that says something has a point of view but don't don't say that just because you apply creative decisions to your craft that that automatically that means it's a work of art <sighs> like i do a ton of commercial voiceovers where i'm i'm putting my craft and my skill and my creative decisions into reading someone else's script. But I would not call that art. I would call it creative work, for sure. But that's... I don't know. I don't know. Getting into, like, what is art, what is not art, like... <laughs> it's not a Boolean thing. You know, art is unto the beholder, you know? Are video games art? You know, I would say they're an art form for sure. And anybody who says they aren't art, I would like to un I'd like to know why. I think that's the larger thing is it shouldn't be far too many people are like video games, video games are definitely art obviously. Your your dissenting opinion is just invalid and should not be listened to and it's like no. I, I saw a GDC talk. Um, I don't remember what his name was. It was a guy making the argument of video games don't need to be art. Which I, to an extent, I agree with. It's like, why are we so focused on... Like, his point was talking about, like, kitsch and how, like, you can just be in, an enjoyable, entertaining thing without necessarily being art. And uh, I don't agree with that aspect as much, but... 
what I do agree with is like, why do we need the validation of like film critics like Roger Ebert and like people in high arts to see video game as art? Like that's, if we first, if we see it as art and we are comfortable calling it art and, and you know, experiencing it as art, then why do we need the validation of these people who are just being sticks in the mud? I don't really care about their validation, but if someone says the video games aren't art, I will, I'll interrogate as much as I can. Like, why, why would you say they aren't? You know? And yeah, that might turn into debate, that might turn into argument, people are emotional. You know. People are emotional creatures, like we can't just not get invested in what we're talking about. But uh, I'd like to know, like, what what is your reasoning for video games not being art? And like, if, if it's subjective, then like, yeah, I can't I can't deny that opinions, you know, opinions can't really be invalidated because they're purely emotion. You can't invalidate emotion because um. What was it? Uh, there's a stupid, like, facts don't care about your feelings line, which is it's stupid. Because in reality, feelings are fact. The fact that someone felt a particular way about something is a fact. Like, you cannot deny that that feeling existed. And it's so broke to just be like, who cares? The facts are still 100% the same. And it's like, is that important though? Like, is it more important that we just be 100% robotically factual? Or is it more important that we, that we interrogate like, why did this make people feel this way? What, what about this caused this emotional response from someone? And what does that say about this fact? You know, I impl uh, hoping, you know, first off, there is a fact because too many people who are like, facts don't care about your feelings are going off of faulty information, you know? Like, I don't need to get into that aspect of it, but it's like, I, you know, if you're gonna say that, you need to at least do the research to make sure that what you're stating as fact is actually fact. Too many people, they just go off of their half-remembered, like, you know, high school education or whatever, and they're like, this is fact, and it's like, I mean, that's what, you know, that is, it's fact that you were told that, but it's not necessarily fact that that is actually how things work, because many, many things have a much deeper nuance and a lot more uh, information than you would have necessarily been taught in school. Like, in reality, school is the broad strokes, you know? They, they posit ideas, they give you a basic, like, summary, factoid kind of view on it, and then they kind of just move on. And the idea is that if you are actually interested in it, you take the time to investigate further and find out more about it, rather than just assume that everything they've stated is 100% the only unabridged fact. Because often that is not the case. I, I, I don't know. I guess the the genetics thing is obviously the, the most contentious one, but it's like... The fact that people think the, like, one week at most that they studied genetics in high school was 100% just how genetics work, couldn't have been rushed or abridged in any kind of way or oversimplified, boggles me. It super boggles me, like the Punnett Square and stuff. So many people will still talk like uh, uh, dominant versus recessive genes, right? You got the, the Punnett Square and all that, and it shows like, um, you know, this is the dominant gene, this is the recessive gene. Or was that Punnett Squares? I don't know. Again, like, whatever. But that's the thing, is that the, the thing that they say, the abridged factoid version, is dominant genes will always um, supersede 
recessive genes, like red hair, right? Red hair is a recessive gene. So if there is a more dominant hair color gene present, it will supersede that. Uh, that's what they say, right? But that is, again, a simplification. And the truth is that is that dominant genes will most often supersede recessive genes, but it is not guaranteed. It is a higher likelihood, but literally if a recessive gene is present anywhere within your genetic line, no matter how many dominant genes are there, it can still be present somewhere in your genetic line. Like, you know, there could be, literally if like one person in your far past, like your, you know, your great, great, great grandparent who was like, uh, from like, uh, from like the Alps or something, like totally removed, so like never even heard of them. If they had red hair and their red hair gene was introduced to your gene line when they, um, when they had children with whoever they were with in your gene line, it doesn't matter how many other dominant genes have come since, there is still the possibility, however low, that you will have red hair. It's very, very unlikely. And it certainly may be diluted. But it's present, and that's, that's how genetics work. Genetics are, you know, genetics are a big pool of chemicals that can be passed down from parent to child and then parent to child again. And more or less picked from randomly, so. The fact that people are just like, trying to say anything specifically about genetics is almost wild to me. There's pe the people who actually study genetics as their job. Like, they'll tell you that it's it's more pro about probability in general than anything. And that your genetics, you know, outside of like congenital birth defects or, you know, illness. Um, like, you shouldn't treat your your genetics as some some big boogeyman or something that's like so powerful that you cannot overcome it with your own emotional human mind like that is not how it works your your brain can work in any kind of way and so much of it is nat it's not even nature versus nurture it's nature and nurture both like what you are already naturally predisposed for and the environment that you've experienced and how that also informs how you interpret um, your natural tendencies. Like, all of that combined creates for just a huge soup of complicated, strange things happening. And to just, for someone who has literally never met another person, to come in and say, I understand your genetics 100% better than you do. You don't understand yourself, your experience, any of that. I, I get it because I read two sentences in a textbook a decade ago. Like, that's, no. You gotta, not only should you do your own research to read more than those two sentences of summary and oversimplification in your textbook, but uh, you should continue to because things change because we get a better understanding. And that doesn't necessarily mean older science was wrong. It was correct for the time. Like it was correct with the information present. So like, yeah, when more information becomes present, more people interpret it in different ways and people cross-analyze. Uh, yeah, and it's, you know, it's also always hypocrisy. It's the people who try and 
be these arbiters of fact and logic are often just as emotional, if not more emotional, than any other, you know, any other person who is not purporting to be that. And it's ridiculous to try and purport that, you know? You, you do not know everything, but you have the propensity to find out more things. And that is what's more important than anything. Is not that, is not to know everything, but to seek out that which you don't know. Any opportunity that you get. Just stay, stay curious. Just keep, keep thinking, keep reading, keep studying. It'll make you better person in the long run. <laughs> all right, let's try the Spooky Mansion again. This one, it's giving me so much trouble because there's just all these indoor segments. I think, I think that's the big thing with this game is that the, the tracks that give me the most trouble are the ones with indoor segments where there's more walls to bounce off of. Because outdoors, they'll keep it like wide and loose so that you can, um, you have plenty of room to maneuver. But indoor segments, they always make so like tight and just pack with curves and other corners. Yeah, and that really, that's what really wrecks my my style, which involves, like, going as fast as I can without touching anything. I mean, that's racing in general, though, isn't it? Ah, dip. It's just going fast. Don't touch anything. Whoa. Yeah, I really just got to get better at this track. There's so many odd angles and things I keep running into. I feel like I should go the low road on that that particular segment. I keep freaking overshooting that. And there we go. Fourth. Fourth is okay. I don't have a ton of room, but I can see the people who are last in front of me. Dip. Oh, that lightning bolt might work in my favor. saying not to take this high road, and then I do anyways. Ah, dip. I was very close, but oh well. I didn't realize those were booze in there doing that. Ah, oh, jeez. Yeah, this one's real tricky in 200cc. Gonna have to keep working at it. But that's enough of a warm-up for now. So I am going to switch over to the main game, Pokemon Legends Arceus. So don't go anywhere. Don't touch there in it, doll. I'll be our back with the main event of the evening in just a minute.
Hey everybody, I am back. Let's get into Pokemon Legends Arceus. This is the last of the, the Lords that I have to deal with, and then we will move move on from there. I believe, according to like a walkthrough, I, I checked a walkthrough to see you know, what would happen after this if I really needed to, uh, if I really needed to grind out to level six, and it looks like I don't, so. Um, we're gonna just move right along to the next area. And, yeah, I, I believe this is about the halfway point of the game. Everything after this, you're returning to areas you've already been. So far, it's only when there's new areas that you need to, uh... That you need to... Uh, that you need to raise your, your level. So, yeah, we're just going to continue with the story here. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, to be clear, I am now... Where is that? Yeah, I am now a fifth star member of Galaxy. And... That means that I can go take on Avalug. Uh, I accidentally did do a cutscene, but it was just, you know, Leventum being like, it's gonna be dangerous. And then Ray being like, you wanna fight? And so I fought Ray. I won. That was kinda it. You didn't miss that much, but yeah, just, just some grinding. Wow. Yeah, that is pretty. Most of it's pretty. This ground right here doesn't look great. Ah, uh, da dum. My word, it's rather chilly here, isn't it? Glad to see you made it safe and sound in any case. Very few ventured to these alabaster ice lands, apart from Tao Hua leading the Odd Supply Corps for excursion to gather materials. But the Survey Corps, of course, must go anywhere the Pokemon are found. From what I gather, Ice Peak Arena, where you'll find Avalug, is rather far off, I'm afraid. Doubtless, this mission to tackle Avalug will be another dangerous one. Learn all that you can from Arita and Adaman to try to keep yourself safe. Will do. Iggy, uh, brisk out here, isn't it? How aren't you freezing? Freezing? I'm practically sweating. If you think this is bad, just wait. This is nothing compared to where we're headed. You know, I'm beginning to think the problem between us isn't a Diamond Clan thing or a Pearl Clan thing. It's just a you and me thing. We'll never see eye to eye on anything, will we? I don't see how we could, as long as you and your clan cling to your vision of an almighty Sinnoh that reigns over time. Forgive my bluntness, but if such a being even does exist, it's certainly not almighty Sinnoh. Yes, yes, believe what you want. Just tell us where we have to go. We're headed to see my teacher. He's only ever found in one place. Which is... You're talking about that Garrick fellow, right? Where do we find him? At Avalug's legacy, obviously. Where else but a great mass of ice could I have meant when I said we'd be headed somewhere even colder? Where else indeed? Ready to go, Iggy? I mean, yeah, I came here because I was ready. Sure, stomp off without me. This is why I can't stand people who only care about whether time is passing them by. See you at Avalug's legacy, Iggy. Take care on your way. So yeah, they didn't really help me at all. <laughs> Pay attention to what they tell you. Hey, it's cold. Uh, I don't think it's that cold. Okay. What was I what was I supposed to do with that information? It's a snow runt. It's ch very chilly. It's gonna, oh, 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 oh. oh, he's getting closer. Yeah. Get him. Nice. I oh. Do I? I got, well, oh wait, I got Sneasel. What am I saying? Sneasler. Apom. What is an apom doing in the cold? Very strange. Let's get rapid dash for this. As good as some. And right back up. 
Thanks, Sneasler. Apoms, really? I don't, I don't see the logic in putting Apoms in this area. But, who knows. A spear berry. What was that? Oh, oh, it's a Swinub. Whoops. Get out of here. I ain't here for you. Get him. Love those guys. Yeah. I guess it's swine ub. Swine nub? I don't know. Get out of here, Haunter. Ooh, low pony. Sneaking. Sneaking. Oh, well. Hey, Baneri, excuse me. Lopunny's the larger one, isn't it? Nope. All right, don't care. Whoa, the heck is that guy? Find him most still. Knock it off, dude. Feels like that is the biggest thing with this. Is that having all this open area with the Pokemon just wandering around seems like a good idea, but then all it turns into is random Pokemon you're not even looking at coming in and messing with your steez. Like I am trying to do something here, bud. Because it's just every they're all too clumped together. You know? It, it's it's clear that they're focusing. Uh-oh. It's Electabuzz. Huh. It's like clear that they're focusing on having a a solid like selection of Pokemon to like fight and choose from. Rather than making it feel natural. You know? Like when you watch the show, it's like some Pokemon hang out by themselves. Some Pokemon Some Pokemon travel in packs. Like just having them all wander around in these general, you know, general spacings and everything where they're all just kind of hanging out. It's like, feels a little too artificial. And the, like the big plus of this whole concept is that you can make things feel so much more natural. Because obviously it is artificial. It's it's a video game. Um, but a video game doesn't necessarily mean unnatural. It just means abstracted, you know? Like, the, the closer to reality you get, the more you got to stipulate. Right? Because... It, it becomes, it's all about abstraction, right? Because obviously, if we were actually running around in the snow trying to fight Pokemon, there'd be a million things that we'd have to do. We'd have to make sure to wear good clothing. We'd have to make sure that, you know, we can actually hold all these Pokeballs. We wouldn't be able to hold more than could fit in that tiny little bag on my back. Um... You know, even the idea of Pokeballs and the Pokemon being able to fit into that is an abstraction. It's to show, like, okay, you have these Pokemon, and we're going to explain in-universe that you don't have them physically, like, hanging out with you at all times. They're tucked away in your pocket in a tiny little ball that is, you know, that is a convenient size uh, but that's like you know that's the one that they decided to to make diegetic whereas the other ones there's plenty other problems that these have that don't make a ton of sense and yeah people say like video game logic and it's like yes it's not even video game logic it's just game logic like when you play Monopoly right 
using an example pretty much uh, most people are going to understand. If you were buying a property, you don't have to go through like paperwork. You don't have to like sit in someone's office and sign your name to stuff, like put out a mortgage. You don't have to go to the, the bank or anything. It's all abstracted out to the parts that are like actually interesting and actually important to the game. Because you're just playing. You're just playing these things. You're not actually trying to be a real estate mogul. You're not actually trying to be a Pokemon master. Um, so it's focused on specific aspects that they think will be interesting and entertaining when combined with the other aspects. That's why there's so many different games that use like similar stuff to uh, Monopoly, but in totally different ways. The whole system will be totally different because it will function totally different in a separate abstraction. You're just taking out the elements of that that you think would be interesting and that you can convey in a way that you know makes it doable. You know, there's a, a game, I forget what it's called, but it's like, it's a war game where you literally have to like work out like how to feed every single troop that you have and every single location and troop is a specific piece that you have to manage like they're a real person. Like it's basically being an actual commander of war. And that's ludicrous to me. That sounds horrible. I'm sure there's someone out there who likes it, but it's like, at that point, like, honestly, it sounds like you'd rather, like, just join the military and actually become, like, uh, become that, rather than play an abstraction of it. Like, that, that's simulation. That's not even abstraction. And simulations can also be entertaining, you know? But even if you look at simulations like The Sims, which is called a simulation, but in reality, it's still very abstracted, you know? They don't speak a real language. You don't have to actually go word by word for everything they say. You know, they, they don't have like a, a little mini game when you cook. Like it's a broad overview of what it's like to basically dictate how a human lives, but it's not real simulated life. All right, here we go. Well, that was a real slog, fighting through those miserable icy winds to reach this desolate bit of nowhere. Well done, us. This gentleman is Avalug's warden and my most honorable teacher, Garrick. So show some respect, Adam man. Let's begin with some proper introductions. I'm Garrick. I serve as one of the Pearl Clan's wardens. And you must be Iggy, right? I'm of the Galaxy Team. Answer me this, would you? On what grounds do you come here seeking to quell Lord Avalug? Uh, he's in a frenzy. That leads to my next question. What is wrong with him being frenzied? He could trouble others. Then I have another question. Setting aside any orders, what is it your heart tells you to do? To quell his frenzy? Our mighty lord of the tundra, Avalug, has done nothing to trouble any person or Pokemon. Sir, please try to keep your cool. For now, indeed, Avalug's causing no trouble. But aren't we also duty-bound to free our people from living in fear that such a colossal Pokemon might begin to wreak havoc at any moment? We are. That's certainly some logic to that. Or, there's certainly some logic to that. But if that is what you hope to accomplish, then we must judge whether this child is up to the task. Who cares about the grandstanding? Let's get to battling. Uh, let, yeah, let's start. My musculature is as hard and unyielding as ice. Think you can break through? Yeah, probably. And yeah, ice types, cool. I'm prepared. We're just gonna hit you with the... Fire Blast. Oh bam, one shot. I really don't like the dialogue options in this, by the way. I think it's it's so pointless. 
Like, it has no bearing on literally even the current conversation. They might have one little dialogue thing of like, huh, sound like a, sound like a coward. But then they just continue with the conversation anyway, so it really doesn't matter what your response is in terms of, like, actual gameplay, and they don't give you enough choices to really feel any ownership over what you say. So it's like... Yeah, like, there's, there's no consequences, there's almost no agency. It really just doesn't need to be there. Outs outside the times where, you know your dialogue option is like go do the thing now or wait i need some time like then it's important keep those obviously but you don't need to have these like the what's your philosophy on this it's like it's not any of the choices actually i have a totally different response but i don't get a choice on that and it wouldn't matter anyways because you have a pre-built conversation that's going to happen so mm outstanding i'm tough as an iceberg but you smashed me through and through i suppose you all can get on with it now this one's all right thank you sir some may still have their doubts about a stranger like iggy but i'll vouch for then if you insist on quelling avalog's frenzy you'll want to claim some of that eternal ice he likes and bring it to my lord's seat good luck eternal ice is it for that you'll have to be able to fly which means you need braviary long story short you've got to seek out a young lady named sabi I just seeked out this guy. Wait, so you knew I was going to need to do this to begin with, and you decided to wait until now to tell me, like, oh, hey, actually, you need to find someone else first. Come on, man. Uh, tell the long story long. You're not saving any time if we waste it puzzling out what you mean. Isn't Avalog one of the Pearl Clan's lords? Seems a bit odd for me to do the talking. But fine, listen up. This eternalized stuff can be found atop Avalog's legacy here. But to get there, you'll need my clan's help. Not even Sneasler can climb this surface, let alone a person like you or me. You're going to have to approach by air, with Braviary's help. Garrick once managed to climb nearly to the top of Avalog's legacy. He says he made it within six feet of the top. Might makes right, or at least height. And, uh, about Sabi, how do I put this? Even when she's not flying with Braviary, she's got her head in the clouds. Well, you'll understand once you meet her. Head towards Snow Point Temple, and you'll probably come across her sooner or later. What? Sabi! Oh, hey. Cool. Save me some time. What's up? My clairvoyance... Wait a minute. Now it would be... My clair... Uh... My clairvoyance told me that I'd lead you on a chase. Think you can reach me? See what you mean about Sabi. But why would she be up there? Seems you better focus on pursuing Warren Sabi. Let me focus on my workout while I still can. Sure. I mean, okay, I just, just gotta find my way around. It's, oh, okay, no Sneasler, I guess. Just gotta walk around. Yep. Hello? I found you. Hello, my name's Sabi. Nice to meet you, Iggy. Same to you. I've heard about you. You're super talented, right? I bet you're going to be fun to play with. I know why you're here, too. You want Braviary's help so you can quell Avalog's frenzy, don't you? Well, you'll get it. If you can catch me first. Let's go, Braviary! Sure. There we go. Where she's at. Yeah, that's it, right? You're just gonna force me to run back and forth. Okay. I have a uh, weird ear, so. Here we go. I already went around here, too. Just gotta get up here. And then, yeah, Sneasler. Climbing. Kingsley. Oh. Can 
Can I not climb? I want to climb sideways. Please, there we go. There we go. Uh, uh, oof. Climbing can be kind of awkward. And I caught you. What you gonna do about it? Iggy! You made it all the way up here in this cold. But the question is, did you catch me? Or did I let, or did I let myself get caught, hmm? Ooh, and one more thing. Am I even really clairvoyant? I don't know, you might be. Hmm, no one but me could really know, right? Anyway, the challenge continues. The next stop of our merry chase is Snowpoint Temple. But the real question here is, am I really having fun playing with you, or am I bored? Hmm? Let's go, Braviary. Sure. Anytime now. Okay. Do, 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 do. Where? Oh, over there. Okay. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. At what angle? Nope. That's a little frustrating. It's not relative. It's relative to the mountain. It's not relative to where the camera is. So I pushed down on the stick because I was looking at them upside down. Um, but she, uh, yeah, she kept going down on the actual mountain. All right, we're running. I mean, honestly, I don't see why Sneasler couldn't climb up this. Seems, seems pretty easy. It's not even that tall. She's got claws. A little frustrating that we just got Sneasler and they're like, uh, actually, she can't do the one thing she's supposed to be able to do. And it's like, you guys could have come up with a better reason for us to need Braviary, you know? Feels like the first draft that they uh, were planning on thinking through a little further, you know? Oh, I just want more excuses to use Sneasler. Sneasler's my favorite. Let's let's keep going. All right, are we are we here now? Are we ready? Yes, there they are. Hi again, Iggy. It's nice having someone new out here to play with. Safety numbers or something like that. Anyway, here's Snowpoint Temple. I've opened the front door for you. Just a little more chasing left for you to do. But the real question is, yeah, you said that. Okay. I heard what Warden Sabi said. If you have Warden Sabi's approval to enter, then by all means do so. But be warned, those who cannot solve the temple's puzzles won't get very far within. Further, the trick is to pay attention to the stone statues. Yeah. Okay, I don't need a ton of hints before I even see the puzzle. Guys. Wait for the hints until it looks like I'm struggling. Like, let me look, like, there we go. I can look in here. I see statues. Got it. Like, let me figure something out for myself before you start holding my hand. Did not ask for that. What does this say? Oh, I can't even... I can't even check it. Well, all right. Get out of here, man. Do. 
I know, I guess it would have been even, it would have been a lot less frustrating if it hadn't been some rando I literally haven't met giving me the hints. Look at that, it even has a waypoint. Okay, okay, well let's double check here. We got the sun. Got the, and literally there's a hint at the thing too. Like, give me at least one attempt before you, before you start cramming hints down my throat, dude. Okay. Okay. It's not even like it's that clever of a puzzle. Uh... I think that one's the steel one? Rock... And then the ice? Well, I don't know which one is which. See, this is way more annoying. It's not even that it's hard. I get it. It's that one, then that one, then that one. But I... I have to specifically look at the thing. Okay. Rock. So that one is rock. These are terrible icons. Because this one could have easily been rock too. That one's steel for some reason. Ice is at least a snowflake. But yeah, rock and steel are totally interchangeable. Visually. Like, what about either of those, honestly? Says rock or steel. Alright. Statue. Oh, the wisp. Will of the Wisp right here? Well, that's pretty easy. Seventeen Wisp remaining. All right, that is ice. Rock. Steel. Looking at that one. Ice, rock, steel. Rock. Ice. Ice, rock, steel, rock, ice. There we go. Yeah, this is a super straightforward puzzle. They really did not need to throw a hint right at the top from some rando. I literally don't know. SMH. So obnoxious that they really think... Like, what's the point of even putting a puzzle in here if you're just gonna... It's already so easy, and then you're also gonna throw... Hints right up top. Like, didn't even give me one try... Like, don't even bother including the puzzle, the puzzle then. All right, steel, ice, rock. Steel, ice, rock, ice. Wait. No. Who's this guy, then? Oh, no, that's from the Steel, Ice, Rock, Ice. That's from the last one. Steel, Ice... Ro Wait, no. Ah, rah, rah, rah. So, yeah, Steel, Ice, Rock, Ice. Steel, Ice, Rock, Ice. Rock. S rock. Steel, ice, rock, ice, rock, rock. Ice, rock, ice, rock, 
Rock, how am I even hitting those? They're so high up. Ah, dip. I got it wrong. Steel, ice, rock, ice. Steel, rock. Steel, ice, rock, ice, steel, rock. Yes? Yes. This is just memory, too. It's like you don't have to puzzle it out. You just have to remember what order it was. Hey. Oh. What the? How are they able to just do that? Yeah, my face. I don't even care, dude. I'm trying to solve puzzles here. Get out of here, Ralts. What? That was it? Just the three? Uh, okay. Sabi, what's up? I guess I've been caught, so we're nearly done. That's no fun. Hey, remember my clairvoyance? It showed me something else. I saw you flying with Braviary. Do you think that'll come to pass? I'll make sure it does. Well, however the future turns out, flying with Braviary isn't easy. You really want to be able to fly high in the sky. Prove to me you're strong enough. Gonna take us on? Yup. Now get ready, because here comes Rhyperior, Meg, Mor Meg Mortar, and Electivire. All three of them, go! Wow, that's uh, that's a lot to throw out all at once. Yeah, that's really unfair. Let's, let's switch. Sidui, sure. with Aura Sphere. Gotcha. And yeah, Meg Mortar is probably gonna do some damage, but not much I can do about it. Or actually, both of these guys could do quite a bit of damage, thinking about it. Burned and paralyzed. That's rude. What? They both get a go? Only one of them did Agile style. Ugh. I hate that. I hate that the enemy gets so many more turns than you do. Because period, they get more turns than you. That's not fair. Like, Agile Style, sure. Or if I use Strong Style, sure. But so often, they just get to, like, completely sweep the floor with me because they get twice as many turns. Even when my guy is faster. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something obvious, but it, it seems really unfair to me. Especially when they have multiple Pokemon and I only get one. So they got to hit my one Pokemon with four attacks before I had any chance. Ridiculous, man. Wow, you caught us and you beat us. You've won all our games so far. But Braviary still wants to get to know you even better. Up to the roof we go. Why can't you just cut me there? I don't need to walk up the stairs. Yeah, it's just a hallway and some stairs. Why do I need to actually walk through this when you could have just cut? That's bad editing. Can games have bad editing? That's an idea. Hold on. I need to write that down. Because I never thought about it, but yeah, that's like... That would be considered bad editing in a movie. And where you decide to drop your player after cutscenes is like a form of editing. Hmm. I hate that the stream marker description doesn't autocorrect. 
All right, let me also put it in here. That could be the topic for a video. Yeah, there's just too much extra guff there that could have easily been cut away, like editing a scene in a movie. Because it is, in a way, cinematography. Hmm. That's an interesting concept. I never thought about that. Sabe. Rock, rock. All right, Braviary. Why not test out Iggy's strength for yourself? Are you gonna fight Braviary? Man, I gotta say, even... Like, if they really... Because obviously there's already a ton of, like, comparisons to Breath of the Wild, just aesthetically. But, like, they knew that those comparisons were there. That, that intro to the battle theme. Like, the battle theme itself is definitely very Pokemon, but the intro with the piano is, like... That's a little too close for comfort. That sounds like the beginning of uh, the Breath of the Wild, like, Guardian theme. Like, full on, the instrumentation and the, like, all of it is, like, that's very Breath of the Wild. I'm just saying. Grr, I can't believe Braviary lost. Well, that's that. Thanks for playing with me. Guess I'll head home now. Bye. Hey. What? Why am I stopping her? I should do it. What? What do you mean? What? Kidding? What? Go home. I just need the bird. You don't need to be here. I was kidding. Play along with me on your flute. Oh, right. You gotta teach me the same song I already know. It's the same song. Like you guys couldn't have taken a few more days to just make a different flute, to a flute little like thing, for every writable Pokemon? Like, if you're gonna have this cutscene every time, it sh should be a different thing. Otherwise, you're wasting my time. I, I know that sound already. Even as a character, the character already knows how to play that because the character plays that for all of them. It feels like they meant to have more than one. Like, have a different, unique little sound clip for each one, and they just ran out of time. They've been cranking out Pokemon games lately, too. Like, there were two... Like, there was this, there was the Diamond and Pearl remake, and now they're already working on Violet and Scarlet, and it's only been, like, a couple years since Shield and Sword came out. Thanks, Sabi. Sure, having Iggy fly around with this, uh, with... Having Iggy to fly around with should be fun for Braviary. Yeah, I'm glad. A world where people and Pokemon live and work together, huh? Hmm? Tell me, why do you think the lightning that comes from the rift would cause those these frenzies? Do you think this is almighty Sinnoh's anger? Or do you think this is a trial it's putting to us? If it is a trial, if we prove ourselves worthy and we quell the last noble... Um, Avalug, then the rift really ought to close, right? Even if the one who seems to be clearing this trial is a newcomer like you, not one of us who have been living here in Susui for ages now. Now, that was a weird, clunky sentence. How come you're playing all wise? I thought you weren't a big thinker, Adaman. Hush, Sabi. I can feel history on the move. As far as I can see, the one ushering in this new era is you. So if I stick with you, someday I might get to meet Almighty Sinnoh myself. The question is, does listening to Adamant fascinate you or bore you to tears? Hmm? Anyway, Iggy, it's time for you to go soar with Braviary. If you jump from way up here, Braviary can take you gliding just about anywhere. But don't forget to get the le the eternal ice. That's why you needed Braviary in the first place, right? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Avalok's legacy is down there. Yeah. Now go get a feeling for flying with Braviary. When you're done serving the skies and want to land, just ask him to dive. Sure. Here we go. Ah, that's why you fall so slow. Give you plenty of time to do that. Can I like... Can I go higher? No. You can hover. Stay at the same height or you can fall. So this really is just the paraglider. Huh. Okay. It's the paraglider with less physics. Because you just fall at a constant rate. You can drop whenever. Hmm. Yeah, so you can go down. You go back up. No. No, you can't. Huh. Okay. Let's see, I do not believe Sneasler could have made it. Still. Crunchy salt. Oh, yes. I need the crunchy salts. I need at least three. Do you got three for me? I need one more salt. Please find me the salt. Guess not. It's ice. Doesn't look any different. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the arc phone. All right, we got it. Hmm. <laughs> At last, this summit is conquered. Wait, that's not right. And I see you made it too. Flew down to this place and obtained the eternal ice, did you? What drives that burning zeal of yours, I wonder? And good for you, you finally made it, dude, but too little too late. Why give him the ice? Hey, hey, I did the puzzles. I do have to respect the effort uh, that you, or the effort you've put in. I may still have my own doubts weighing in on my mind, but I will make the necessary preparations so that you can face my Lord Avalog. Meet me at Ice Peak Arena. And don't try to repeat the wondrous feat you're about to see me perform. A tall leap like this can only be managed by highly toned bodies like mine. Till next we meet. Okay. Where am I going over there? Sure. So finally, after half the game, I can climb and glide. Got it. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. This guy's just strutting. Just strutting. At Volo. Volo? What are you doing here? I guess he do be traveling. Why, if it isn't Iggy, what a pleasure of finding a familiar face, or any face, in this far corner of the Alabaster Icelands. I came to bring Garrick an order of sword caps, and he was more than willing to have a chat about Avalug. What do you say, interested in a bit of gossip? Absolutely. And why wouldn't you be? So Avalog, yes, the fifth of Hisui's nobles. That he is, and you know what? He's an absolute beast. Well, yes, according to what I was told, not only does he barrage you with chunks of ice, he also fires off massive icicles, and he can cause sharp ice crystals to erupt from the ground below you. Doesn't that seem a bit too powerful to take on? This doesn't sound like gossip, this is strategy. What's more, apparently the Avalug of old could be up to a hundred feet tall. Doesn't that seem a bit too big to take on? Oh, you'll be alright. You just have to eat some sword caps, then give your training your all. Nothing better for building muscle than that. Onward now, to the arena! 
Hmm, yes, well, I did want to see that Avalog, but perhaps not at the cost of my life. So I suppose my freezing digits and I will be off. Later. Bye. Yeah, that wasn't... That was misleading. I just... Okay, Braviary will hop up a little bit at least. Yeah, if he had said, like, do you want some strategy, I would have been like, nah, I'm good. Instead, they couched in like, oh, do you want to hear gossip? And it's like, I guess that sounds more natural. But it's just incorrect. Hmm... Alright, let's Sneasler our way up. There you go. There you go. Yep, you want to start it? Let's start it. I'll make you some bombs. Here we go. We're going to play it. We're going to do it. Here are the bombs. Same as always. There you go. Throw them and then fight. Let's go. Whoa. That's a big... Big ice swell. I really should have dressed better for this. Oh, well. Dang, boy. He big. Oh, he big. Uh. Oh. Honestly, not as big as I expected, though. He big. He ain't that big. He pretty big. But not that big, you know? Oh. Wait, what? Oh, I can't even get close to him? I can't jump off the side, so it is really just I have to... That's frustrating. So their idea of ch doing this challenge is they made it extra challenging, but then they narrowed it off so that you have way less options to tackle it. Yeah, that's that's pretty frustrating. Yeah, they just added fake challenge by not letting you actually go near him to try and dodge around. Hmm. Yep, there we go. All right. Yep, we'll just keep hammering away. Go bait. This is also something I find frustrating. It's a minor thing, and it's kind of just a problem with third-person shooter mechanics in general. But not being able to control your Pokemon separately, or not being able to control your camera separate from your aim. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd like to be able to move to look in a different location. But instead, I'm just kind of stuck looking where I'm trying to, like, attack. Oof. I think that works for me. Uh, let's... Let's toss out Gastrodon. Gastrodon's a beast, dude. Gastrodon is consistently, like, the strongest Pokemon in my crew. Got him. Yep. Keep it going. Yep, let's just... 
pull out of the way at the last minute. What? Wait, 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 wait. My health was not that low. Man. I only got hit like once or twice before that. What the heck? I don't know, maybe it's just because I've already played a lot of games with uh, similar boss fights and mechanics, but this is pretty underwhelming overall. It, it, I guess it just feels slow, frankly. There's also, like... There is such a delay when you hit the thing. Like you are not you are not invulnerable for the entire roll. And there's such a delay between rolls. It just makes it kind of like a non-option. Ah, uh, da. Yeah, I don't know. Them hyping up how huge he is really rings hollow when uh, I hit it. I hit dodge. It really rings hollow. When um, I'm not allowed to get close to him. Like, I don't feel like he's that big when all he ends up being is far away. And so, like, mechanically, which is to say, effectively, in as real a way as it can be to me, the player, he's not really any bigger. He's the same size as the rest of them. because I'm only allowed to approach him when he is the same size. And while his attacks move a lot more, he's just staying in the same place the whole time. Stop it, stop it. You guys know how, mu how much I'm able to dodge. I find it kind of frustrating that they're not timing it out in a way where you can like reasonably dodge. I threw that out immediately. You're telling me I was too slow. Come on, man. Just don't let me fight with the Pokemon if you don't want me to fight with the Pokemon. All it does is like, it's just cramming this Pokemon fighting mechanic into a battle that is totally disconnected in every other way. Like, I get it. It's a Pokemon game. You have to have Pokemon battling, but it's like, have that or have this. Do not do both. And then insist that the Pokemon... Insist that the Pokemon battling is also important. Because all it is is a very slow... version of just being able to stun an enemy. Because that's all you end up getting from actually fighting, is you stun them. So you have to do a whole battle's worth of, like, time to just do a pretty standard stun when it would have been the same if you just, like, I don't know, stunned him? Like, rather than make me battle him? Because there, it's clearly I've already done something that would stun them. So just let me stun them. I just, it's... It's a sloppy adherence to legacy mechanics, you know? It's the, it's the same kind of problem that, like, Castlevania 4 had, or, like, Security Breach has this problem, where it's trying desperately to include the uh, camera security stuff from the earlier games, but it doesn't actually work. It doesn't, like, really matter. In the long run, those are such a minor portion of the game compared to the actual stealth and sneaking around. There's a reason 
They didn't have you do that in the original games because they recognized that that would be pretty lackluster. So similarly, it's like, I wish they would have noticed that this is a lot, like this is its own thing. I'm trying to ram Pokemon battles into this because that's how you fight in the Pokemon games. It defeats the whole point of making a spin-off. Like, why make a spin-off if you're just going to make it a muddier version of the other games with, like, some concepts that don't really gel correctly? There we go. Jeez. Yeah, here we go. Strong style, fire blast. Do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill my guy. Did it get burned? Hmm. It's fine. I'm going to throw a Gastrodon. Earth power. You got killed up brother. I also wish your rate of fire could be a little faster, but that's that's just a personal preference. It makes sense that you as a kid are not able to throw sacks of ice any faster than this. So keep doing that. Stop. Whoop. Whoop. Oh, oh, what the? Okay, I didn't realize the ice would still hurt me. I hit it! I hit it as fast as I possibly could. That was literally just bad luck that I didn't know where the next one was gonna be before I already was dodging one before that. Focus on this. Like, focus on this mechanic or just make it Pokemon battles. Don't try and have it both ways and do both just sloppy. The only reason the Pokemon battles are so solid is because they already had it figured out. But then even then it's actually sloppy because they tried to have like something where you can like be hit multiple times and it feels so unfair because it ends up meaning that the enemies can always hit you more often than you can hit them. Like you can't have it both ways. Focus on your, like, core mechanics and make them work. Don't have a million mechanics and do none of them that great. Ah, jeez. Oh, uh. Just barely. He was about to get out of that. Strong style, fire blast. Hit him. Hey, critical hit, nice. That means I'll have rapid dash for the next time. Closer, get closer. If I'm not allowed to get closer to him, then let him be closer to me. I hate having to wait on him to come back close enough to be able to hit decently. Like, it's a pretty clear cycle that we're going with here, so you're not shocking me that he's doing one thing over another. I already know what he's planning on doing. Yep. Can't hit him. Can't hit him because he's too far away. Let me, let me dodge, let me dodge. I literally can't. I can't dodge because it's timed out dumb. Oh my God. 
I hate I hate this. I hate this mechanic, dude. It's really, really bad. They wanted to have like Dark Souls. They want to have like <sighs> Monster Hunter or something. It's like you can't just slap that in. You have to like the reason Dark Souls works. It's not just hard. It's not just a dodge system. It's not just these aesthetics. The reason Dark Souls works is because it's very tight controls that are very predictable. This dodge mechanic sucks. Period. The timing is always weird and never allows you to do stuff. Your freaking camera doesn't let you see most of the stuff you're trying to dodge. It is poorly implemented. That's it. Like, they wanted to do this. They saw that this other game was doing well, and they tried to slap it in there without understanding why that game worked. Why people liked it. All they saw were the aesthetics of dodging and attacking, and they didn't understand why people liked those. Like, this game is enjoyable if all you want to do is run around and catch Pokemon. Like, if that's what you want to do, this game is great for that. There, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of hours for you to do that. But if you want to actually play through the story in the game, it's so agonizing. Like, all of the non-Pokemon catching mechanics are so, so rough. They're, like, clearly cribbed from other games without any of the, like, solid polish or, like, um, like, design that made those other games work. You can't have it both ways, guys. It, it makes me think of there was some guy I worked with in Nintendo who was like, yeah, I'm going to make a game that's like a m mix of like the Elder Scrolls, but it's got space combat that's as intense as EVE Online. The most in-depth space battle game that exists. And I was like, wow, have you made any games before? And he was like, uh, no, never once. And it's like, oh, maybe you should like... Start with something smaller rather than one of the most ambitious, or like Yandere Simulator. <coughs> Yandere Simulator is a super cool idea, but it is the most ambitious concept you could possibly come up with. It's Hitman <coughs> meets Persona. It wants to have all of the like depth of a Hitman level in an environment the size of Persona. Oh my god. And one guy decided to do it by himself. <clears throat> like, it's a cool idea, but like, you have to understand the reason nobody's done that isn't because no one has had the idea. It's because it's incredibly difficult to pull off correctly. So similarly, it's like having Pokemon mixed with Dark Souls, mixed with Monster Hunter, mixed with Breath of the Wild. It's like, it's not that it couldn't work. It's just like they needed to put so much more time into making this concept work. You can tell that they had the idea and tried to execute on it like way too fast. I guess... I guess I would rather have less Pokemon games coming out constantly instead of having a remake and a spin-off and a main game in within two years' time. I'd rather they do, like, one game really well. But it's like Sword and Shield was pretty lackluster. The story was not super interesting, and it's... I mean, it's just Pokemon again. It's just Pokemon again. Not really anything that... Inc oh, not really anything that groundbreaking on that side. Like, this would be a super groundbreaking idea, but they just did not put enough time into actually executing on it. 
If they had had the entire main Pokemon team behind this project, this could have been so cool. But as it is now, it feels like a fan game, frankly. Like, it feels like a game that, you know, if this was, like, an indie game made by fans, I'm, kudos, this would be super incredible. But the fact that this is a triple A game sold for a full $60 by the most successful franchise and company in gaming. Like literally, Pokemon is like the most successful non-subscription based video game uh, franchise like ever, ever. Pokemon does incredible numbers. Um, and yet, and yet they keep doing stuff like this. Instead of making just one really good game and taking their time on it, they keep pumping out game after game after game so fast. And it just, they just need to give themselves more time, man. I just, it's, I don't know. I, I guess it is my personal experience, but like, this game so far has been like long stretches of just getting carted from point A to point B with, you know, the option consistently to like catch Pokemon if I wanted to, but I don't really want to because it's really tedious. Um, you know, it was fun at the first when I was figuring out all the stealth mechanics and stuff, but like now that I know them, it's pretty much the same thing. Like some, there's only really like three types of Pokemon overall like there are the aggressive ones the prime ones which are also basically the aggressive ones the shy ones and the standard ones and like if you can work around that like it's just ends up being super tedious so it's just going from point A to point B leveling when I need to and then doing these which are just like really, really clunky, really difficult in the worst ways. Not difficult, not difficult because they're actually like a challenge, difficult because the controls and the camera and just everything about it is so chunky and janky and hard to deal with. Like, it really does. It feels like they wanted to do the Pokemon MMO everybody has been saying they should do for a million years. And that's not the kind of game I like. I think MMOs are the most boring, like, the most boring type of game. Because it's literally just watching cardboard cutouts swing towards each other and then numbers cascade across the screen to tell you what the result was. It's just not, like, you have to have a super strong imagination to find that stuff evocative. I don't. I guess I, I lack imagination. But, yeah, like, and then, yeah, just running from point A to point B and just kind of, like, hitting interact on different stuff. And they can change what interacting is. Like, oh, it's like I'm slapping a frog or something. But, like, it doesn't matter in the end. It's the same gameplay. Just because you change the words around it, all you're doing is running to a place or an object that moves or a character and just hitting interact. Like, that's not fun to me. That's busy work. That's not asking anything of, like, my my intellect, it's not challenging my reflexes, it's not uh, introducing interesting concepts to me, it is just, it's just tedium. Why, why would I want to do that? Like, I play games to break away from the tedium of the regular world, why would I want my games to also be tedium? The closest I get is like racing games. Racing games are the line for me. Where yes, it is repeating a lot of the same things over and over again. 
And in way, in a lot of ways, it's very grindy and tedious. Like, I've been grinding through Mario Kart for quite a while now. But the difference is that there is exciting... There are exciting elements that keep it fresh. You know, even if you're going on the same track, there are random elements that uh, can cause you to lose. And you gotta stay on your toes. Like, you, you can't just rest on your laurels and just keep mashing the same buttons over and over again. You have to actually take the time to skillfully move to the correct positioning and to maneuver your cart correctly. Like, I find that, you know, while it is very samey, it's not tedious because it's actually asking something of me. It's expecting me to, like, try. Oh my god, what was I supposed to do there? Actively just trapped. Like this, this part could be super fun. But it's just... It's, it's, it's just so frustrating because it's so slow. I, I think that's the big thing is it's slow. If this was like faster and didn't waste as much of my time because I could get through a run faster, I would find it less frustrating. But, whoop. Uh-oh. Uh, God damn it. Let me pause. I still hate that plus is not just the pause button. Like, literally, it's the most simple thing to do for your game. Make the thing that people are going to hit instinctively when they want to pause. The plus button. Pause. Make that the pause button. Like, it's especially in a high situ like high stress situation like this, where you can't even use your writing Pokemon anyways, just switch it to be pause. And it's just such poor interface design, dude. The most simple aspect of a game that is mostly turn-based. Yeah, it's just, it's slow, which means that when you fail at dodging something, it's agonizing watching as you know you're gonna lose, you know you're about to die, but you have to watch through the animation, you gotta watch your character recover, only to get hit again. Yeah, see? Like this. It's moving so slow. And so... I get impatient, and I try and dodge too early. Even if I was dodging perfectly, like there's so many situations where you just get trapped, and then you have to wait while the obstacle actually loads in, and you become vulnerable again in a position where you couldn't have survived anyways. Like, either let me move faster so that I feel more agency to actually dodge things, or make the obstacles move faster so that I can get used to this stuff. It's just, it's not a good combat system. It's really, really not. Come on, give me the... No, I meant to do strong style. Ah! Well, whatever. It wasn't a critical hit anyways. Hold on. I need to use the restroom, so I'm going to take a break real quick. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch the internet dial. I'll be our back with more Arceus in just a minute. Okay? Okay.
Okay. Let's keep this attempt going. Situi is apparently also strong against Apolog. Just fighting in grass, it it makes it pretty clear someone in the office was like, we gotta balance ice, it's gotta be weak to something else. And like, I don't know, fighting? Not as many like some of them like make good sense, you know. But a lot of them it's like kinda random. Because they just need to balance out, you know, different types have to be stronger weak against other types. Come on, come on. Oh, no, he's doing this one. So I just gotta wait, wait it out, wait it out. All right. Just gonna play it safe. God, you gotta hit dodge pretty much immediately after the last one happened. You gotta make sure you do it in the correct direction. Jeez, oh jeez. Almost there, it's almost there. Please, please, take him out. Did I get him? Yes. Just barely. Very close. Sheesh. Fight sucked. Like, I could see that fight being really good if it had... I don't care. It felt very Kingdom Hearts. But, like, Kingdom Hearts feels good because it has tight controls and, like, they actually understand how to make fighting feel good. It's not a team that's mostly used to doing turn-based combat trying to do live combat. I'm not saying they can't. I'm just saying that they did do a bad job. Like, they, they could have done a better job, for sure. Lots of room for improvement. Eric, sir, you needn't look quite so downcast. But, but, uh... Seeing mighty Avila, or no, 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 uh, seeing mighty Avila quelled, and by such a slight child, a child that fell from the very sky, is this eager girl some kind of monster in disguise? She is no monster. She's the one who risked her life without a second thought in order to quell our frenzied and suffering nobles. Iggy. Garrick cares for the Pearl Clan with all his heart and believes in Almighty Sinnoh just as deeply. So he is feared more than any of us that getting involved with the Diamond Clan and your galaxy team could cause our people to flag in their devotion to Almighty Sinnoh. Flag in? What are you talking about? But that will change. Erita? I know your fears will change once you see what I've seen. Iggy has much to teach us. She's shown us how we can overcome all manner of strife so long as our Pokemon are with us. She's made me want to help Glaceon realize greater strength as well and to see my whole world grow broader. Seems you've already changed, Rita. You could pull that off, Iggy. You quelled every last frenzied noble. Oh, yeah. The alarm that was going off was for my melatonin, so I should actually take that. In fact, one sec. I got allergies. So is that space-time rift going to start closing up now, or what? There's a little way of knowing for sure. Though the rift does seem perhaps a little smaller somehow. Let's hope so, anyway. Well, with any luck, things will settle down now. Although even if the rift does start spitting out more of that strange lightning, we should still be alright as long as we've got Iggy. Indeed, we should be. It's good to have her at our side. You know something, Rita? We never, we may never agree on who's got it right about all my Suno, but you pro-clan folk aren't all out bad in my book. Look who's finally seen reason. Anyway, now that we've, we've quelled the last noble, I say we pay grim old Commander Kamado a, a visit and see if he'll finally crack a smile for us. 
sure. Uh, da -da -da -da. There it is. Let's get out of here. Yep. Oh, it seems you made some, yep, mm -hmm, most illuminating. Continue. Hmm, you managed to quell Lord Avalug. Fantastic stuff. As always, I'm sure the commander is eagerly awaiting your report. To the village. I think one of the larger problems with this game is it actually undermines some of the things that would have been big achievements in other Pokemon games. Like, part of why catching Pokemon was such an achievement in the base games is that it's random. It's random encounters, so you had to actually take the time to even get the opportunity to catch them and then also have the skill to catch them. Or, like, shiny hunting, because they're so rare. But, like, in this, it's like, you can tell if they're shiny right from the bat. You can see that they're there before you even, like, have to engage with them. So it's like... It's so much less of a challenge. But he calls them Kyo Kyo. Snow White, Vulpix, and the Snow. Sure. The Sea's Legend. Hmm. Ah, jolly good choice there, Iggy. I see you've taken on that request I posted. Let me fill you in right away then. I was strolling along Prelude Beach the other day when I saw something swimming a little way out from the shore. Rather regrettably, it disappeared before I could snap a picture, but I can only assume this mysterious swimmer was some sort of Pokémon. From the way it swam, it seemed to be drifting on the ocean currents. Now, if I'm not mistaken, from the seas behind Jubilife, that would take it all the way to the Cobalt Coastlands. This rather leaves me wondering if the Pokémon was headed there for some specific reason. Given the circumstances, I was thinking that if you spoke uh, that if we spoke with the good warden Iskan of the Diamond Clan, we might learn more. Yeah, maybe I will. Oh, okay, he's here. I got your message, Professor Leventon. So, uh, you're looking for a Pokemon that was swimming towards the Cobalt Coastlands, yes? Well, um, I'm very sorry, but I can't tell you much based on that alone. But, well, there is one thing I can tell you. I've heard that long ago, the Cobalt Coastlands was known as the East Sea, and... A princely Pokémon was said to live in the waters there. The story of this princely Pokémon can be found in a tome called The Sea's Legend. But no one knows much about either the tome or its tale, beyond what I've just told you. So, uh, that's all I know. I guess I wasn't much help after all. Sorry about that. I'll, um, I'll just take my leave here then. So we gotta find a book? Yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, it's just, whatever. I don't know. The thing is, it's like, so many of these requests are like, like, ooh, this mysterious Pokemon I saw, and I'm like, ooh, are we gonna get a new Pokemon? And then when we find it, it's just, the j the joke is always that it's like, oh, it's just, it's just like Bidoof or whatever. So similarly, this is gonna be like a whole run around, and it's gonna be like, oh boy, I wonder what, oh, it's just, it's just like a Gyarados. Cool. Like, I just, I don't know. It feels underwhelming when there's no real new discovery to find because we already know all of the Pokemon that are in this. They're not gonna have a radically different Pokemon that's all secret and super rare. It's gonna be somebody we've heard of. What's up? Ah, if it isn't one of our beloved customers, might I trouble you to help me with a little survey work? In my family, we've always passed down tales of some ancestor that lived in a village around the avalanche slopes, but I've never been able to find any hint of such a settlement ever existing beginning to doubt the tales are true. But everyone wants to know about where they came from, don't they? So help me out. See if you can find any evidence people ever lived around the avalanche slopes. Sure. Eventually, probably. I guess... Uh, it's just... Th that structure undermines... Like, when you're trying to be serious, like... Yeah, we want you to actually feel mysterious about this, but then, like... The fact that every other mysterious Pokemon just ended up being a joke? It's like, it's, I don't need to take this serious then. Got it. 
thanks for the thanks for the precedent. Each of the Pokemon nobles became frenzied. Now each of them has been quelled. We still have no explanation for why this calamity befell us, but I'm glad to see it put to an end. And to think peace would be restored to Hisui by the hand of our mysterious Riftborn helper. When tomorrow dawns, it will dawn on a world restored to normalcy. At long last, we will be able to return to our normal lives. I mean, what's going to be different, though? Like, I'm still going to be going out researching and stuff, so, like... All you're telling me is there's no more boss fights that are going to be like that. Okay. Go nourish yourself with the wallflower and allow yourself a good long rest. Don't forget the survey core's work is not over. It does not end to live your yeah, fearing Pokemon. Same thing you always say. Yep. Oh boy, I make mochi! Wow, Pokemon sure are scary, but you're really cool, Iggy! Oh boy, I'm worried about what's gonna happen in the future. Yeah, that's pretty scary. Anyways, let's eat some mochi and get some breast. I don't care, man. These scenes are so boring. You sure are cool for doing the thing. Arbitrary choice. Moving on. Eat some, eat some friggin' mochi. Fill out your Pokedex. Yep. Cool. Like, scenes like this don't have to be boring. You could have interesting character development happen, but they never do. They always say the same stuff. I'm scared of Pokemon, but I think they're fascinating. I'm precocious, and I think that Iggy's really cool. Yeah, Iggy did a great job. Anyways, let's have our mochi and go to bed. It's exactly the same every time. Bakum. Oh, geez. Is that an explosion? See, okay, there we go. I wish you would have just cut to this. This is interesting. Who exploded? Is there a terrorism? Who did this? What? Oh, well, that's concerning. This doesn't look good, Iggy. Oof, yeah, I got a lot worse, huh? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he's. Li we're all looking at it. What does that change? Some sort of dreadful energy seems to be pouring from the rift in space-time. Now the entire sky has gone red. I mean, yeah, you just showed it to me. You don't need to... You could have cut that whole line. I have word from the commander. You're to report to his office at once. For God's sake. Again, like bad editing. Just cut both of those lines. They're so unnecessary. Literally, we saw the sky was red. We can assume the commander wants to see us. Just cut to the scene where he's seeing us and we can assume he asked for us to be there. Simple. Pretty, pretty obvious, I would think. Hmm. The way the sky has changed, it is ominous. Very ominous indeed. What's this about, Commander? You did call us, uh, you did call us here to discuss the quelling of all the nobles, didn't you? I can wait. There is a more pressing concern here that must be addressed. The first strike of that strange lightning, the one that drove Cleavor into a frenzy. It struck the night that Iggy fell from the sky, did it not? It only seems natural to think that the two events might be linked in some way. Who or what are you really, Iggy? I don't know. I just fell from the sky. Get off my back. Indeed. You came from the rift, as did the lightning. You're connected to these frenzies, are you not? I mean, connected in that we're both from the same source, I guess? Did you think to gain our trust by quelling the frenzies you yourself brought about? And having gained our trust, what then? What is it you're really after here? Hold on, Commander. There's nothing to suggest Iggy has wronged us. Exact, uh, exactly. Besides, you really think she's got the sort of fear, the sort of fearsome power it'd take to make all of this happen? Let me ask you in turn. Can you prove beyond a doubt that she is free from guilt? That's not how that works, but okay. This person, this stranger, appeared out of a rift in space-time. Who here can guarantee she is who she says? Who here can guarantee she is to be trusted? How are we getting around to this now? Like, why... 
why are they doing this now is really the big point. Because they distrusted me from the beginning. And then I built trust with them. And suddenly now they're just like, actually, never mind, we never trusted you. So you just wasted my time. You could have just done this bit from the start. It's not really a twist to just reverse all of the character development that you've done so far. <sighs> Whatever. But that, no one can do that. You're asking us to prove a negative. How's anyone supposed to prove the absence of all doubt? Come on, let's be reasonable. What is Iggy supposed to do then? She will be given the chance to investigate this latest disaster, but not as a member of the Galaxy Team. She remains a suspect until she can clear her name. There are those in our village who cannot trust a stranger like you who fell from the sky. So I must ask you to leave. You are no longer welcome in the Galaxy Team. Consider yourself banished from this village until you can explain why these calamities keep befalling our good people. No. Until you've restored our world to its rightful state and proven your innocence beyond doubt. Is that clear, Selene? Yes, sir. How can you act so heartless? Don't you believe in Iggy? Do not attempt to intervene on her behalf. I'll do what I must as the commander of the Galaxy Expedition Team. But I have not forgotten your deeds, nor the unusual skill you have displayed. That's why I have chosen to let you walk out of here free rather than clap you in chains. Yeah, great. I don't care. It's so contrived. Like, literally, they had to just whip out a, a plot contrivance out of nowhere. Just, like, make this complication have it happen and make this character who has grown and developed in a totally different way act completely out of character for where he is now. If they'd done this at the beginning and made me earn my place in Galaxy Team, like, realistically, by doing all the frenzy stuff, then this would be th whatever, but, like, the fact that they're basically just doing a hard reset, but, like this, I, uh, this is a dumb twist. This is a really dumb twist. You're to be expelled from the village? Seriously? Orders are orders. Again, why did you need to do that? We did. We knew that, the, like, you didn't have them react in any particular way. They reacted with shock and disbelief. Yeah, I could have assumed that they. That's how they would feel about this development. You didn't need to waste our time showing it happen. Oh no, that lady I bought some clothes from once is also in disbelief. I don't know. Did I even talk to you? I don't know. Yeah, sure, whatever. I get, I get what they're trying to do here. Like, oh my god, all these people you've grown to know and love. But I haven't. I've barely interacted with most of them. And I get that that's probably a me thing, but it's like, they also have given me very little incentive to do that outside of, it's there. If you want to do it. I didn't want to do it, so now this point rings super, super hollow. I'll take it from here, ma'am. Under submit, yep. Yeah, got it. Some, uh, set the stranger as a member. Uh, personally escort, escort, sure. Yep, come on, come on. Mm-hmm. Yep. But it's still d disbelief. Oh yeah, it turned red. Yep. Ah, the, the two people who still believe in you will probably help you. Got it. I figured that out. Sure. Seek out, why'd you bring me here then? 
Take me to Leanne's camp. You, what in the world did you do? Look at the size of that rift. Lightning starts pouring from it. All the Pokemon in Isui could be thrown into a frenzy. The entire clan is in a panic now. I should have known that the only thing that would come from that rift was disaster. I need help. Help? Ah, well, that's not exactly something I can do. It's not that I wouldn't like to help you, but it would put Arita in a difficult position. I truly do wish that I could repay you for quelling Cleavor's frenzy as you did. You must know that. There's nothing I alone can do for you. Ward and Mai might be able to help you, though. She's a caring woman, after all. You'll most likely find Mai at the Warm Bridge. I believe it's a very significant place for her. I'm certain that somewhere in the vastness of Hisui, there's a place for you as well. Okay, just gonna fast travel as close as I can. Let's, uh, Braviary, I guess. I don't know, it's about as fast as Weird Ear. What is the, the hitbox to convince Sneasel to come? Come on. Go, go. Thank you. Like, what? It, whoa, oh, 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 oh. Okay, okay. Because, like, it's just really weird sometimes. Uh, Braviary. I think this is faster than Weird Ear. I don't know. I mean, it's easier because you don't have to find your way around. And dive, dive, dive. Oh, hey, it's the Munchlax. Oh, yeah, you. My, my, what a frightful sky. Such a disturbing sight would be enough to put anyone ill at ease. You don't know what brought this about, do you? I don't know. And I suppose it was too much to expect that you could already have an answer to all this. I heard from our leader what happened. You can't return to that village of yours, can you? But I'm afraid the Diamond Clan cannot be the ones to save you. The Diamond Clan could end up at war with the Galaxy Team if things went badly. I think you would regret that as much as anyone. The great weird deer took a liking to you. I want to offer you my support, but... Forgive me, I cannot help you in this. Do not abandon hope, time solves all things. And besides, you seem to have a talent for making your own way in the world. I have no doubt you'll continue to find a path to walk. Yup. I can see Mufasa in the sky. Grr, said that. Oh, well, hello, Shinx. Can I help you? What's up? Y yeah. Okay. I don't like how the lighting was affecting the mouth there. It made me look really old. Okay. Yeah. Strange events seem to follow you wherever you go, don't they? Why are you... It was clearly Volo. Why'd you do the question mark, question mark, question mark? Found you at last, Diggy. I've been looking all over for you, you know. What would I do if I were to lose one of my favorite customers? I literally haven't bought anything from you, dude. Don't worry, I've already heard what happened. A good merchant knows well the importance of staying abreast of all the latest news. It seems you're in quite the pinch. No place for you among the Diamond Clan or the Pearl Clan. To say nothing of how poorly the Galaxy Team has treated you. But not to worry. There are still corners of the Hisui region where we can stash you away in secret. I know a spot that will be the perfect hideaway. Leave it all up to me. Sure. Here we are. I know, I know, it's no palace, but you know the saying about beggars and choosers. Where did he take me? 
Oh. Hmm. Sure. Hello? Shirking your work to come pester me again. Even beneath a bleeding sky, you never change. Always a pleasure, Mistress Kojita. But I'm afraid I'm not here today to learn more of Hisui's myths and legends. No mistress, thank you. Just Kojita. And this is? Why, Iggy is the woman of the hour. She's the one who quelled the frenzy of all the Pokémon nobles, believe it or not. Ah, the poor wretch you spoke of. Lost in time and space. Dear me, lost one. It seems I'll be able to fulfill my duty at long last, thanks to you. Duty? Indeed, I am to guide you, Lost One, for the task of preventing great disaster falls to you. The rift in space-time must be mended, lest time and space themselves be thrown out of balance. But come, you may enter my dear hideaway. There's much to be told. Sure. The space-time rift is said to be a portal to innumerable other dimensions. In one such realm, far and farther still from ours, dwells almighty Sinnoh. The Diamond Clans? The expanse from antiquity to eternity and the expanse to all sides above and below. Time traces the path we tread from the here and now into the future. While space yawns all-encompassingly, surrounding us in every direction. You see, don't you? The two together, time and space, comprise all creation. The universe. How can one claim that either is greater than the other, as those two clans do? If you really can't... I can't... That was rhetorical. That was clearly a rhetorical question. Why are they wasting my time by giving me a dialogue option? Perhaps the truth is clear to a wanderer such as you, one who has known other ages. Now listen, lost one, here's what you must do. Hisui holds three lakes of great import- Lakes? Lakes? That is not where I thought this was going. Lake Verity, Lake Valor, and Lake Acuity. At each dwells a Pokemon said to embody one aspect of the mind. Complete the trials each will set you and bear the air gifts to the shrouded ruins. There you may receive the red chain. With it, perhaps you can bind the world together. Bind the world, you say? You mean it won't close the rift? Kindly spare me your doubts, young man. I know the old words and what they bid us do. How true they are isn't mine to know, and regardless of their truth, I am bound to pass them on. How callous of my ancestors to leave their legends to their children without a thought for the hardship it will cause them. But here we are. You know your duty and you'll do it, won't you? Uh, of course. There is nobility in knowing what must be done and seeing to it. Oh, sorry, I'm getting a text. Mistress Kojit has got a lovely workbench here, and if you need materials, I'd be glad to help. I'm always happy to do business with you. What about the pastures? Ah, oh, that is a problem, isn't it? What shall we do about that indeed? Uh, what was that cry? Have we now lost Pokémon as well as the lost child? Do see to it, please. How could I refuse you, ma'am? Off we go, Wiggy! Is that sheep? Oh, it's an Avra. Hello, hello, it's an Avra? Where did you teleport in from, little fellow? That's Celine's Avra, isn't it? And it's got a letter, a letter addressed to you, Iggy. Take a closer look. To Iggy, you may use my Pokemon as a go-between to access the pastures in Jubilee Village. I've also ensured that you'll be able to utilize our base camps without issue. I have every confidence in your ability as an adept Survey Corps member to bring this bizarre situation under control promptly. Sincerely, Celine. Okay. Good tidings from the letter, then. Uh, it's a secret. Wink. Now then, so we're to visit three lakes. Doesn't sound like an easy task, that's for sure. Sure would be wonderful to have a kind soul who might help us out. Quite the opportunist, aren't you, Volo? Such a consummate guild merchant. What, the, what do you mean, opportunist? He's not selling me anything. I've literally never bought anything from the guy. The man should reassure my people for now. The Warrens are keeping a close eye on their nobles, too. Seems all quiet. All's quiet for the moment, and so here we are. But still, we'll never get away with openly aiding you. If we were to undermine the commander's direct orders, relations would grow strained. 
Long story short, we want to help, but without drawing attention. So it'll be just one of us. Me or her, it's up to you, though the answer should... This is, like, pointless. They've literally both showed up in different areas just as easily as the others. Also, with Celine helping out, it really, like, takes the wind out of the sails of, like, oh, you won't be able to do anything with the Galaxy team. Actually, you will just, like, under... Like, she's taking on risk, I guess, which does change the dynamic of it, but, like... Great, so any amount of challenge of, like, oh, you have to find your way back. Nope. No, it's all fine. She just immediately reopened all the pads you thought were shut off to you, so... Uh, let's go with Rita. I like doing her voice more. Of course you'll choose me. I was the one who got you what you needed when you first set out to quell Cleavor. You and I made his bombs together. Yeah, I choose you. Just what I would expect of you, Iggy. You made the right choice. You won't regret it. So then, the leftover leader will... Leftover? Think again. Iggy trusts me enough to leave the tough job up to me alone. I'll be keeping an eye on the commander, so I can't let you all know if any... or So I can let you all know if anything happens. Of course. Of course. And the lucky chosen one comes with us to the lakes. We can fill you in on the details as we go. Well, the first task will be to decide which of the Hisui region's three great lakes to visit first. But yes, we should get moving. I'd rather we walk this road together, but if the commander were to get wind of it, it would only make things worse. I'll meet you at whichever lake we choose. Alright, Arita, you and Iggy. Well, you two would do what needs doing. Sure. Yep. This is like... Yeah, this is like Breath of the Wild, but way slower. I don't know. Which one has which lake? Yeah, that one. Sure. Like, it took most of the game to get the basic movements all locked in with all of the riding Pokemon. And now it's finally opened up where it's like, oh, now you can choose which, which uh, specific thing you want to do. We stop being linear. It's like, dang, dude, too little, too late. In fact, it's kind of the opposite of uh, Ocarina of Time. Where Ocarina of Time was like three things at the beginning... And then, uh... Yeah, it was like three things at the beginning. And then... Five things after that. So I did the five big ones first. And now I'm going back and doing the three. Huh. It's, that's just a coincidence, but, um... Yeah. Weird that it's like the inverse like that. Yep, yep, yep. Let's get over there. Also, they're literally calling these trials. That's, uh... Yeah, really plan your hand, guys. I wonder what inspired this. They say this lake actually used to be a volcano. Then it erupted, leaving a huge crater that filled with water, and so Lake Verity was born. Is protected by a Pokemon called Mesprit. It was when Mesprit took flight that people first learned the joys and sorrows of living, and that's how the old tales go. Blah 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 lore. Let's move on. The Arc Phone is literally the Sheik. I don't want to have to keep pointing out how, how many like direct direct things it's taken from Breath of the Wild, but it's like, it's so blatant. It's really absurd to me, and I wouldn't mind, because I love Breath of the Wild, but like, it's taken them all and just like, it's just all these aesthetic things without recognizing, oh, it's Gudra. Without recognizing why they were enjoyable in Breath of the Wild, or what about Breath of the Wild made it work. Yeah, man, it's a Gudra. Got it. Let's friggin' let's kill it. Catch it. Whatever we gotta do. Do. Go 
Go rapid dash. Beat him up. Sure. I don't like how it pulls into its tail like that. That's gross. That's disgusting. <coughs> Strong style fire. Ah, oh, dip. Oh, is that Gudra's uh, water type? I don't, I don't know. I don't know most of the modern types, frankly. All right, fight, aura sphere, strong style. I'll need to do at least three of those. See, yeah, that time they didn't get two hits, but then other random times, They'll get two hits. Not during when they're doing agile style. Not when I did strong style. It's so obnoxious, man. And one more. Pokemon fighting. Ooh, we ain't it exciting. What point can I evolve my Pikachu? Do I have to use a stone? Hmm. However. It's curious, but when I watch you and your Pokemon battle, I feel as if there's no obstacle that can't be overcome if people and Pokemon work together. Now let's see about the Pokemon of the lake. Oh, was that not the Pokemon of the lake? Oh, I... Stupid face that they make. That stupid face of su surprise really undermines any actual surprise I could feel at a situation. Because then I, I, it's so goofy. Was that Mesprit? Is that a new character? I mean, that's kind of neat, I guess. Your emotions. Share them with me. They're yours. You can only imagine how it must feel to speak directly with a Pokemon like that. You felt to this land what stirred in your heart. Uh, surprise! How did it feel to bond with Pokemon and work together? Exciting. What did you feel when you mingled with Hisui's clans? We we're all so different. What did you feel? I felt better, sure. I don't care. Did any of that matter? Did w Literally, did any of that change what the outcome was? No, I, I got the same item? Yeah, literally none of that mattered. Quit giving me dialogue options if you're not going to do anything with it. Like, you can base a whole game around dialogue options like that. But instead, they decide to just toss it on top, because that's the thing other games have done. And it's just a waste of time. It literally if Unless they have it actually change something... Don't waste my time with it. Like, if it if it doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna care. I'm just gonna pick randomly because it literally changes nothing. Yep. Literally, you just said, like, I can't believe Pokemon. Without me? I mean, I, I was there. Why'd you include that line if you were just gonna have her repeat it? Yep. Worked out well. Lore, 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 lore. So much lore. I do not care. Wow, you did that. You talked to the Pokemon. Isn't it crazy? Uh, 
Yep, yep. Sure, can I, like, just skip? <sighs> this is my least favorite part of all modern Pokemon. Is the hundred hours of just dialogue, 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 dialogue. Philosophizing lore, philosophizing lore. Hey, how about this? You just let me get to the game! The game is already tedious and dull. The only thing it could really be is faster. Alola. Hey, thanks. That's pretty, pretty neat. Flying. Let's go a little faster. And then we'll just do that again. No, that's the bug, bug bump, pop pod. That's what they're called. All right, sneeze lured up. Get right in there. Hey. Seawater fluke. Yup. Uxy. Yep, do the thing. Come on, come on. Let me get to the Pokemon fight. They attempted a puzzle at least, so you know, that was kind of fun for a minute. Oh man, it's Zoroark. The Baneful Fox. What is it? It's like psychic, I don't know. I'll just slap at it with Pikachu first. So is it going to be a higher level, or are they all the same? Yeah, they're all the same. Since you go at them at whatever le of, like, order. Don't use nasty plot. Uh, let's do Thunderbolt. Paralyzed? Nah, I didn't get paralyzed. That's all right. Yeah, let's go with Crobat. I think, yeah. The, the big thing with like, Pokemon for me is I know there's like the Nuzlocke and everything, but I never understood why that was a challenge. For the most part, like obviously the like whatever the first Pokemon you get in a region, um, and like having to like release them if they pass out, sure, those parts more difficult. But like, I don't switch out my Pokemon in pretty much any Pokemon game. I just get a loadout of like decent types, and I just kind of stick with it for the whole game. Never really feel much issue. 
How many are there eyes? One by one, yet all at once. Uh, repeat that. Combi is four. Zubat is none. Unknown is one. That's five. Magneton is three. So that's eight. Dusclops is nine. Pretty sure that's nine. I don't know Combi very well, so I could be wrong. See, here we go. A puzzle. What? Oh no, I have to, like, hmm. So it's a password. Hold on. Okay, so I don't have to add them up. Got it. It's confusing, but whatever. It's cryptic riddle stuff. Combi is four, I think. Four zero, four zero one. Three one four zero one three one. I'm pretty sure. I don't know combi. It's just like two rabombies, right? Hold on, let me look up combi. Like this is at least kind of a puzzle, but it genuinely like. It's pretty obvious what the answer is. And then it just comes down to if you actually know the Pokemon or not. Combi, Combi has six eyes. Okay, so six one, or six zero one three one. Got it. Six, zero, one, three, one. There we go, I did it. They really needed to do a better surprised face. It's so goofy. It really whips the wind out of the sails of any serious dramatic moment, dude. Like, any any genuine emotion I could have felt to it is immediately replaced with mirth, frankly. As I'm just like, wow, it's, they really modeled that and kept it in. Come on now. Yep, red chain. Let's go back. Gogeta. Yes, yes, say something. Uh huh. Like, at least this is actually about me, this story, but it's like, I don't have any choice in it. I can't decide to run off and do other stuff, really. Like, if I want the story to happen, I gotta do these very specific things. And it's like... There's just no agency to it, man. So much is just watching other people talk around me. And that's such a dull way to tell a story. So boring. And what story does it end up... I, I, that's the thing, is like the story itself, even if you were to tell it a better way, is like not really anything interesting. So, I don't know. It just feels like a lot of... a lot of additional junk for very little reason. The second, it's not a straight up and down slope. Sneasler is such a pain to use. It's, it just loses all fluidity. Oh 
Also, who would have thought it? The three lakes are the three lakes that we've run into. Actually, let's dash. And dive. Uh oh. Ah, sup? Yeah, form volcano. It's a lake. That's what they do usually. It's just place water collects. Whoa, you opened the cave with your phone. They gotta make sure to put that in. They gotta make sure to put that in all of these because they don't know what order you're gonna do them in and they couldn't possibly. It's better to just be super repetitive than to maybe do something slightly out of order. Sup? Those quills sure look vicious. Gastrodon. Go on then. <sighs> Jesus, a little guy. Oof. Yeah, that's what I thought. Earth power. Get him. One hit. Yep. Where's the little baby thing? Which little which little fetus creature am I gonna talk to this time? Strike me if you can. Quit trying to hit me and hit me! Oh, okay, it's a bomb. I like how every time they're like, it has to be their It has to be their favorite food, but uh you know, it just looks the same every time, regardless. Did I do it? I'm not through yet. Barely even gave me much time to try. I guess you just gotta kinda hope that it pops up where you're already throwing. Not through yet. Okay, I'm gonna look up what you're supposed to do. Not through yet. Hold on. I mean, look up what it expects me to do. This is not very uh, clear. Hold on, which uh. Which test is this? Lake Valor. Proud Lake Valor. Overquill, Azelf appears. I'm trying to throw a few bombs. 
Oh, that's it. Okay, so literally I was almost there. That's it. I guess you just don't give up. Okay. Sure. I mean, I wasn't gonna anyways, but I can imagine... I, I can imagine someone getting super frustrated because it just doesn't... The textures are totally borked in these caves, dude. There are constant... Look at... Look at this! Look at this! Oh my god, look at the lines! This game is sixty dollars. They expect us to think they put their all effort into this, that this is a triple A game deserving of top dollar. And this, look at this. Look at these lines. You can see the pixels where they messed up the transparency. I j Dude. Like, I'm willing to put a lot aside visually. Like, I don't think that you should get down on Pokemon for the visuals. Because there's a lot of stuff they gotta deal with, but like... The visuals or the gameplay, at least one of them has to be like rock solid. And neither is. Shrouded Ruins, got it. Do the thing. Who said that? Kojita, okay. Yep. We don't know what it means. Yep. Yep, hey guys. What's up? How you doing? Whoa, red chain. Well, then what are the other three things you guys gave me? If y'all were just gonna give me something at the end anyways, why'd you bother giving me, like, the, the friggin' shogi pieces or whatever they are? think I'm actually much closer to the end than I thought I was because yeah the walkthrough only had like two more chapters after this so I'm just going to finish this off tonight because I don't I don't want to play it tomorrow frankly I just want to finish I just want to finish this yep hey what's up I thought you were coming with me, Ray. What happened? Hey, you're not supposed to be here. You're gonna get in trouble. Uh-oh. All right. Yep, hi. Oh, I guess she wasn't missing. She's being bashful. Yep. All right. So the solution was not uh, do what we'd already been doing. The solution was hope to find the information that was being hidden from us by a random hermit in the middle of nowhere. If she cared, she should have come forward to the galaxy team and told them about it. 
and they probably would have done this much earlier. But the Lucario, you got a request. Uh, I mean, all right. Roof. Jump to matter. Hello. Sure, whatever. I'm not gonna do that, but go on. Let's keep moving. Hey, Arita, what's up? Dialogue? Cool. Yeah, we'll go go find him. Mount Cornet. Whoa, hello. Who are you? Hi. Oh, thanks. Okay. I'm guessing that changes based on how many requests you've done or something. I don't know. Come on, come on. Hey, Volo. What's up? Sure. Thanks. You couldn't even leave it to me to understand that I needed to get a bunch of that stuff. You, ju you just decided to stock me up regardless. To take my last bit of agency away. So that I can't even th do my own stock management. Hey, thanks, Melly. What's up? I don't think you're gonna. I'm. I don't think I'm gonna need you, but whatever. All right, let's go. In fact, what am I doing? Let's just do this for a bit. Let's go back to Weird Ear, I guess. Oh, yeah, I had Ursa Luna. Huh. Kind of just forgot. This wasn't super useful most of the time, aside from the requests. Yep. Iron Chunk. Got it. Who's there? Who's there? Is that the old man? Who make the potato mochi? Oh, it was you the whole time. He's going to go Super Saiyan. Oh, still alive and kicking. Sorry about having to shatter the wallflower. I'd much rather be up here now, serving up some freshly grilled potato mochi. That Taskmaster Kamado has gone and left me to oversee our food supply. He always finds a way to put even these old bones to work. I'm handling that. I suppose I'll handle you as well. Time we got rid of you once and for all. You serious? You want me to catch those hands? Bro, I will end you. I'll make myself plain as his right hand. I'm charged with executing all the gritty deeds he can and won't do. Okay, there's an interesting twist. Not a great twist, because, like, he doesn't feel like a threat in any way, but... You know, I wasn't expecting it, so it's a surprise at least. Smoke bomb. Smoke bomb away. Cool. Oh. Wow, huh. He he was a ninja the whole time? Okay. That's a that's a twist. Oh, it's Miss Magis. 
Hot dip. I don't think Gastrodon's strong against that. Well, whatever. Stop it. Earth power tends to be the way to go. It's pretty good. Agile style. Does hypnosis do damage? No. Shadow balls sure do do though. Hunter, sure. Uh, Dark Pulse. Wrong style, sure. Gotcha. Alright, throw out something else. Guard of War. Yeah, sure. Okay, stats are raised. And let's take you out with a uh, Dark Pulse. Ooh, that's not a lot of damage. Uh-oh, I'm actually feeling a little more nervous now. I think I'll be okay though. Yeah, let's go with Crobat. Gardevoir isn't grass type? I thought Gardevoir was grass type. I don't know, I guess it's just the green, but. Get poisoned. Okay, that did it. Come on now. Gallade. Isn't Gallade just like male Gardevoir, basically? Uh, sure. Ugly design, frankly. <laughs> look at the look at that weird tube. All right, strong style. Air slashed. Ooh, not quite a one shot. Ah. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Critical hit? No, not quite. Oh, don't kill me. Ah. Well, uh, Rapid Dash or Pikachu? Let's go with Pikachu and then I'll take a second to, uh, Heal back up here. But first, hit him with the Thunderbolt. Strong style. Then Sneasler. No! I love Sneasler. Why would you make me do this? Mail dip. I appreciate it doesn't make you go through the whole list. Um, hold on, let me look at the Pokemon to see who I should put out. Gastrodon. So yeah, let's give Gastrodon the Max Revive. What? I didn't even do... Again, why do they get two moves sometimes? I feel like I don't understand, like, this version of the Pokemon system, because I thought it was Agile style you get two moves. Strong style, you might miss out on a move and they get two moves. But it seems like, randomly, they get two moves sometimes. I don't get it. I really don't, and I find it incredibly annoying. Feels super unfair. There we go. I win. 
I had to use a single item. Oop. Cool. Very good indeed. It's only a foolish ninja who tries to keep after a target they know they cannot beat. And to be honest, I don't hate you. Might actually like you after a fashion, at least for the skill you show in battle. But listen well, Iggy. Pokemon are truly terrifying creatures. Kamado and I saw our hometown. Yeah, okay, you got a grudge, got it. Yep. I don't... I don't care. Oh, good. Thanks for healing me up. I don't need to grab the Iron Nugget. I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah. That, I mean, that was an interesting twist, at least. But... Whoa. It's up there. Hey guys, are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, you better do the thing you were already doing. Don't stop and do a whole cutscene if all you're going to tell me is the stuff that you've already told me like 40 times. Here we go. Nice armor, bro. You again. I heard this red chain. Keeping whatever. Yep. I don't care. My dialogue does not matter. As always. Yep. Gonna try and talk him down. We're gonna have to battle anyways. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what they say. We're gonna have to fight because obviously. He's got four Pokemon. They're probably gonna be in the 60s. Might be a bit tough. Let's let's find out. Alright. Ancient power, strong style. Get him. Get him. Pretty good, pretty good. I'll probably do it. Yeah. Uh, Haunter. This one doesn't miss, so that'd be the one to go with. Dead. Cool. Snorlax. That's oh, that's actually pretty bad for me. Snorlax is a pretty tough customer. Yeah, looks like Decidueye is my only guy really stands a chance. Strong style or a sphere. Get him. I mean, not that he's particular, like anybody's particularly weak to him. It's just, uh, yeah, Decidueye is the only one with the super effective move. Oh, let's go with Crobat. Cool, got him. Put out the, yep, yeah, Fable, got it, cool. I mean, they finally recognize that normal Pokemon are the most difficult, so this, this is the correct move for this final fight. Maybe final, there might be another fight after this. I'm gonna presume the, uh, 
Arceus. Arceus will probably pop up. Gollum. Sure, Gollum. Uh, Rapidash? No. Dip. <laughs> the ones I want are the only, are the ones that are all fainted. Uh, yeah. Let's do that for the minute, and then uh, get some revives going. On Gastrodon. And then, uh. Was that my only revive? Ugh. Playing this a lot more dangerous than I expected. I don't even need to use a max potion. Hyper potion right there. Gastrodon, help me out, bud. Barely anything. Don't even care. Hit you with the Earth Power Strong style, baby. <coughs> One shot. Easy. Yep, I did it. I'm literally the only person who recognizes Pokemon aren't terrifying, so I'm not shocked that I've been able to handily beat pretty much everybody. The fight before this one was harder. Yep. Yep, Dogeza. Cool. Let's go do it with the red chain thing. Let's go slap down the MacGuffin they introduced in the friggin' 11th hour. Oh, my guys are healed back up. Cool. Gastrodon up front. Wait. Who? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I just never went and did training. I remember who she is now. Yeah, why'd you guys walk here without me? Do the thing, put the chain down. The voice in your head and heart, yep. Yep, I'm gonna try and catch Arceus, got it. Ultra Ball. Ultra Ball? You're not going to give me a Master Ball? You're not going to give me a Master Ball when, like, all of reality depends on it. Come on, man. That's stingy. That's stingy. Maybe they haven't invented Master Balls yet. I don't know. I think there was something about that in the original lore. Let me write that down. Hey, let's finish this up. I was not expecting to do this tonight. I thought I had a lot more to do, but uh, this isn't Arceus. What the heck? That's one of the Z Zalgus. Zorgus? Zimge. I don't remember. Palkia? It's like Dialga and Palkia or something. I don't know. I, I never played Diamond and Pearl. My funny bone. Yeah. Palkia. That's the guy. Youch! Oh, none of these are very good. Well, and with the earth power at least. Not trying to kill him, anyways. I'm trying to catch him. Hey, yeah, yeah. Kill this guy. Swing out with, uh. Oh, who do we got? Haunter. Sure. 
Let's be let's be gentle. Fight my weakest one. Agile style. Oops. It's fine. I got him in the yellow, which is about what I wanted. Now we are just going to spam Ultra Balls. Alright, here's attempt one. Nope, didn't get it. Look at his stupid feet. Look at his dumb feet. His big old toe. These legendaries had like the dumbest designs. Look at this ugly thing. All right, attempt two. Nope. All right. This goofy dinosaur. I like dinosaurs, but this thing's silly looking. All right, let's put this out so that I can try and chip away at a little more health. And we'll go with Fire Blast. I'm severely under leveled, so I'm not too worried about killing it. Oh yeah, and I forgot guys. water, I guess? I don't know. Pikachu, how about you? Pika P, attempt number three. Nope, got out. Oh geez, poor Pikachu. Throw that Ultra Ball. Attempt four. Nope. And attempt five. Nope. Oh well. Guess I couldn't do it. Get out of there. Try to, yes, no duh. I did try. Hey, he didn't say catch me. He said try to catch me. Hold on, let me go get some get some items from Volo. Wait, where'd he go? Further down? Yeah, there he is. Hello. Yeah, let's just get a crap load of max revives. Let's get ten and then we'll spend the rest on Ultra Balls. All right. Before I make another attempt, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break. So don't go anywhere. Don't touch the internet dial. We'll finish Pokemon Legends Arceus in just a minute.
Hey, everybody. Uh, let me save real quick, actually. Nope. Uh, there's the save. According to Coco, there might be more than I expected here, but, uh, I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Yep. Try and catch me. We'll, we'll do it. I'm ready. I need to be less worried about, uh, killing it because it's, it's much hardier than I expect. Never mind, I was trying to turn on my, uh, humidifier and then I realized it's not plugged in, so. Whatever. Would have been extra noise anyway, so. Why he get a move first? He probably just has a much higher speed. Uh, yeah, strong style. Get him. Ooh. Nearly. What? Well, okay, I guess. I did use strong style that time, so that is actually fair. Get him. Get him in the red. Almost the red. That's fine. That's f I'll I'll take that. And I don't care. We're just gonna start spamming ultra balls. Go. Attempt one. That was it. Cool. Much easier that time. <laughs> yeah, I just got it, had to get it lower, I guess. Alright, so is that it? Or is there a bunch more to do? Caught it. Caught the Elmay Sinnoh. I don't think that was the Elmay Sinnoh. I'm pretty sure. As Arceus is the Elmay Sinnoh. Oh. Power fails. A frenzied one. It comes now to fight. That's why I'm here. Another one. I mean, okay, chill out. Wasn't that hard. It's quite easy, in fact. Hmm. Foot. Yeah, here's the other one. Gur gurgle, gurgle, Stan. Who? What's his name? I don't know. One I didn't pick, basically. It's not as threatening a face as you guys seem to think it is. I mean, he large, but he ain't that impressive. Boot it, come on, get out of summit camp. You dunce, you won't be any use to anybody if you die up on this mountain. That's kind of cute that he has an accent he's been hiding. Hmm, maybe there's more than I thought. Whatever. Such dreadful power. It's certainly beyond our current capabilities to survey such a creature. I'm amazed you even managed to stay on your feet before it, Iggy. And did you notice the energy pouring out of the rift? It seems likely that a buildup of the same energy was what caused the strange lightning. Yep. Got it. Yup, yup, yup. Yep. Got it. Come on. Chain of red. Sure, Pokeball. Ooh. 
Yeah, let's go talk to Leon. Whoa, those matter? Who would have thought? Origin or All right. Come on. Come on. Yep. Hey, what's up, Melly? We don't have time for your goofy antics, guys. Let's just let's go. Thanks for the candy. Can I please play the game again? Anytime, guys. Yeah, bumbling but I don't care, dude. Head for the place where you can do the origin or- yep. No, are you a request? I'm not doing a request right now. The Prime Grotto, there we go. Get the rock. Yet another MacGuffin. Where? Wait, what? Is it under something? Yes, it's under something. It's one thing I find about uh, find frustrating about game maps is they most of them do not do elevation, which is pretty important. Yep, it's a rock. We found the rock. Got it. Yep, that's the rock. It's glowy. Yep, do the thing. Give me the rock. You guys, get out of here. Do I have to fight these guys? Come on. Yep, let's fight. Oh. Smash you down, just as always. Wow, a whole two Pokemon. Guess it's fairly high level, I don't know. Strong style. Gengar. Gengar, Earth Power. One shot, cool. Okay, get these guys were supposed to be like Team Rocket, but Team Rocket, at least in the first game, had a lot more going on than just popping up randomly sometimes. They had like a whole area. Come back.
Yeah, sure, whatever. Get out of here. Give me the rock. Give me the rock. Thank you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Did a good job. All right, we got the MacGuffin. Why are there two fast travel points so close to each other? Feels like a waste. Yep, take me to the place I need to go. Jubilife? Why are we going back to Ju I don't care, dude. They probably explained it. It doesn't matter. This is just such a waste of time. You could just get me to the fight. Literally, all I did was run over to a place, do one crazy easy Pokemon battle, and that's that's it. Like, if we got... If we... Streamlined this dialogue... Cut out all these shots where it's just slowly panning across everybody to pretend like it's more cinematic. This is so much bloated storytelling. We did it. Only took us two seconds. Just give me the thing. Give me the ball. Give me the yep ball. Thank you. Thanks for a ball. Palkia. Yeah, Palkia is like, hey, do the thing. Do the thing you were already going to do. That's what so much of the dialogue in this game is. Hey, that thing you were already going to do, you got to make sure you do that. Hey, uh, bef before you do that, let me remind you, you really need to do that. Anyways, are you ready to do that? Are you sure? This is what you need to do. Like, stop. Just let me do it. Cut like 90% of this dialogue out and just let me actually play the freaking game. What's up? Yeah, cryptic, cryptic nonsense. Got it. Can I leave? Can I leave, please? I miss something? Oh, okay. I gotta go grab Palkia from the thing. Yeah, sure. Ah, uh, where is Palkia? There we go. Palkia. Move. Uh... Place Pikachu, I guess. Yeah, sure. Yep, let's go. Dude! Okay, okay, finally. This is also so stupid. I've spent all game familiarizing myself with a team of Pokemon, training them specifically. 
And now it's the end of the game. And they're like, hey, that Pokemon you just met and just caught and have no personal connection to, that's the one you gotta finish everything with. That that's where you have what you have to finish the game with. Is the one that you don't know anything about. Sick, dude. Great theming. Pokemon, you gotta form a real connection with Pokemon, and it's super important that you personally know them. Actually, it's just a tool that you gotta pick the you know the best one that is just dropped in front of you. Okay, okay. Hope you hope you don't mind. Stop it! God, I don't care. Can I please just get to the place I need to be? Yeah, great. Whatever. Hey, Volo, what's up? What's going on? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Thanks for letting me know. I already bought everything I needed. So cool. Yep, you did that last time too. Okay, let's let's do this. I was a fool, I didn't know what I was doing. Let's do the thing. Philosophize, philosophize. My viewpoint is different from your viewpoint. That makes us deep, interesting characters, doesn't it? There's sure no better way to illustrate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I won't skip this one. Even though it's giving me the option, let's just let's look. I don't even get to fight it. It's literally just a cutscene. Okay. Oh, okay, Palkia. Hey, what's up? The horse. Okay. Yeah. Load it. Okay, it's one of these fights. Got it. I figured as much. Youch. than the Avalug one so far. In fact, this is easier than the Electrode one, thinking about it. Okay, those rings are a little annoying. Yes, I need a little more distance. Whoops. Dodge the wrong direction. God damn it. I couldn't see what the tell for the rings was. Yeah, of course I'll attempt the battle again. What else am I gonna do?
there's not like any way for me to like prepare more. I guess like grinding my Pokemon stronger, but I didn't even literally get to a fight section yet, so I don't know what you expect me to do there. Can't grind out my dodging ability. Okay, you actually have more time than I expect. Oh, okay, don't dodge away though. Dodging away, you'll just land right in it. I yeah, sure. Squeaky, it sounds like somebody rubbing balloons together. Nope! Ah, I, I did the wrong one. I literally just said not to do that. How do we find out what its favorite food is, actually, thinking about this? Or is this just generic balms? Whoa! Yeah, this is actually, like, easier than even the friggin' Cleavor fight. That was a stupid easy fight. It's just, yeah, they try and make it feel high energy, but it's just mashing the trigger button and then occasionally dodging. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Caught. It didn't do the triple one with any of the other ones that I saw. It's usually just the one and then caught or not caught. Sweet. I did it. Yeah, real underwhelming. Avalug was way hard. Electrode honestly was the hardest one. Avalug was annoying, but like... Electrode with the the balls following you like that was the hardest Mechanic although when I figured out that it barely did any damage it like made it so much easier Really did it yay. Oh good show Finally Just what I'd expect Yep, I don't need I do not need every single person's reaction honestly Know what they're out of here. A festival. Gather your clans. This will be a great festival. Cool. So, like, was that it or? Arceus, you gonna give me another text? Hit me up. Hit me up, boo. Hmm. Guess not. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Oh, man. You don't even get to see Arceus. I guess Sinnoh is just both of the legendaries from Diamond and Pearl? Or just whichever one you decide to choose in the end? I don't know. Yeah. The prospect of this game was pretty interesting, but I, I think... What it boils down to is they promised with all of the marketing that it would be like, like Pokemon Rangers or... Pokemon Gale of Darkness, one of the weird ones that, like, really does something different, and they didn't really. It kind of just boiled down to being Pokemon with a few minor changes that really did not change the core of any of it. Like, yeah, you can see the Pokemon before you attack them, but that honestly makes it easier 
Like, it's kind of cute to see them running around, but there wasn't a ton of thought actually put into, like, where they were or how they clustered or any of that, so it felt, you know, it felt kind of underwhelming. The writing Pokemon, like, they really, like, they, they took way too long to, like, get you all of those. The fact that... Like, it is set up to be like Breath of the Wild. I, you can't deny that, like, they clearly took heavy, heavy inspiration from Breath of the Wild. And they gave you the two key, like, movement mechanics, climbing and gliding, last. Like, basically towards the end. I don't know. Like, I if, if you enjoy... Capturing Pokemon after Pokemon over and over again. If you enjoy all of the research tasks, if you enjoy the requests, like genuinely, if you wanted a Pokemon MMO, and not just because you wanted to see Pokemon running around, which is all I ever wanted, but you want it because you literally love MMOs and running from point A to B, getting quests, going and doing whatever fetch thing, you know, doing a lot of busy work. If that's what you like in a game, you would probably love this, but that's like the the antithesis of what I look for in a game. And yeah, I really tried to stick it out and enjoy myself, but it's it was just very tedious. The main thing that they added, the the like noble the frenzied fights was so underwhelming and at the same time so frustrating. Like, if, if they had focused a game just on that, which is what I thought it was going to be from the trailers, is that it was all going to be stuff like the frenzied fights, even in the overworld. But in the overworld, it's just it's just Pokemon again. It's just the same turn-based thing. And uh, I'm just bored of that, man. I, I don't care how you jazz it up, if you let you move around, all this stuff. It's like, it's just not an interesting thing anymore. And you guys had something that could have been interesting and you, you didn't do much anything with it, so. Yeah. Thanks for adventuring. Hey, I appreciate it, guys. It's a cute picture. Oh, and it, do it doesn't let you capture the ending picture. Just as a last, a last little F you. You're not allowed to capture the one, you're not allowed to take a screenshot of your reward for winning. That upsets me so much more than it really should. That is infuriating. It's such a tiny thing that they just chose to deny you for no reason. No reason at all. <sighs> I'm gonna add a marker for that. Dude, arc phone is beeping. Seek out all, yeah. Gotta catch them all. Got it. <sighs> Progress saved. Okay, uh, oh, I guess there's still a little bit. Maybe? Is it just gonna be gotta catch them all? Because, like, I think that's all they're saying. Morning! Hello, Ray. So the space-time rift is gone. Think this means we can finally close the book on this whole mess? Well, in any case, there's one book we can't close yet. The Pokedex. Time to get back to our official Survey Corps duty of completing it. We're going to meet in the Survey Corps office to discuss how we'll tackle the work that's left. See you there. Sure. Let's see what they expect of us. What's up? Fill out the Pokedex. 
Trust you enjoyed yourself at the festival. Sure did. Indeed. It only seems natural given the crowd. I believe last night was the first time I've caught a glimpse of you making merry, Captain. Oh, that was Leventon. I believe you must be imagining things. Now, Professor Leventon, to business. What is the current state of progress on the Pokedex? I dare say we've made quite significant progress all in all. Though we could afford to put a little more effort into our research tasks. And, of course, it is hard to know how far to go in pursuit of some reports. Certain Pokémon have only been mentioned in Hisui's Legends, after all. Who knows if they are even real? Yeah, we're still relatively new to these parts. How are we to know what's true and what's not? Pardon, couldn't help it over here. If it's Hisui and History and Legends you want, then I'm your man. Well, I've spent plenty of time studying such things instead of ahem. I mean, while also tirelessly doing my work for the Ginkgo Guild. Yep. I mean, this is like post game, right? I don't have. I finished the story. This is done. Yeah, no, this is post game. Okay, cool. I'm yeah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching through this series. I'm sorry. It ended on such a sour note. It's just uh Yeah, this is not a great great ending to it, but if anybody wants to see me continue this, I mean, let me know, but you better be pretty passionate, I guess, cuz I'm not into grinding. All right. Whoops. That's not it. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I know I, I got pretty annoyed in this one, but yeah, that's me. So if you if you watch, that's you know I'm not gonna pretend. I'm I'm not gonna fake my emotions to act like I'm happier about something than I am. I feel like that would be a disservice to everyone watching frankly. So, thank you for watching. Please take the time to follow and subscribe if you can't, or if you haven't, please take the time to follow and subscribe. Check out my socials. I got Twitter, YouTube, a YouTube uh, stream archive, a YouTube channel where I have archived all of my streams. My goodness, I'm very tired. Um, and a... Uh, uh, a Discord, which you can join. It's free to join. I'd appreciate it if you could. I plan to do some more stuff with that soon, so check it out. Um, in any case, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, but I'm going to start up a new series. The, the new one I really want to do, Card Shark, is not out until uh, the beginning of next month, so maybe I'll get into Kirby and the Crystal Shards. I like I like that game a lot, and it finally came out today. haven't had a chance to check it out, but we'll, uh, we'll check it out tomorrow, so that'll be That'll be the way to go. But thanks for tuning in, everybody. And hey, if no one else has told you this, I'll tell you this. You're a good kid. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let's see who there is to raid over to tonight. It's pretty late, so it's going to be kind of a toss-up. Let's see. Dr. Blue Jay. I don't even remember last time I, I watched Dr. Blue Jay. So, yeah. Right over to him. Y'all have a great night. See y'all tomorrow for some Kirby. Yeah, Kirby's. Kirby's fun. All right, let him know I sent you. Have a great night, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.